Master Sergeant Austin Griffin. Good evening from David Alpy Field, Claude Mann Stadium in Malvern, Arkansas. It is Arkadelphia taking on Malvern, the Leopards of Malvern High School tonight. Should be a contest. This is uh, a game that represents two rivals just 20 miles apart down the interstate, but having very different seasons this year. Malvern is 0 and nine on the season and they are 0 and six so far in conference play. Arkadelphia is four and five overall, four and two in conference play though, and Arkadelphia is going for its fifth consecutive win tonight and a number three seed in the playoffs. And so it's a very important game for Arkadelphia. Malvern has senior night, a lot of players and band members and other folks from the student body being recognized tonight for senior night here at Malvern. So they have a lot to play for as well. This should be an outstanding game, but Arkadelphia would love to dominate early and take the wind out of the sails of a winless Leopard team this year. It hasn't always been this way. It's been quite a rivalry. In fact, this is David Alpe Field here in Malvern, and David Alpe was a longtime athletic director and head football coach at Malvern, a rival and a friend of John Outlaw of Arkadelphia in the 1980s, and he stayed at Malvern throughout the rest of his career and has this field named for him here. In those days, the rivalry was a very, very strong one. It remained very strong and uh, you could say it still is except for the fact that it's really been dominated recently by Arkadelphia. Before that, there was a stretch where Malvern dominated this matchup, but then that turned around in the uh, Chris Oliver... Uh, Jacardi Howell era when Arkadelphia began to turn it around against Malvern and Arkadelphia has dominated the last three years. In fact, the last two years, Arkadelphia has scored 63 and 66 points in the last two meetings of these two teams and Malvern is really having a, a hard stretch this year as they have not won a game yet on the season. This is Jeff Root. Glad to be back with you this week. With me, of course, Caleb Bird, also Jack Bennington, Jim Rothwell is here on Stats, and our very own Chris Babb with the Arkadelphia Public Schools with us, and he is our engineer and commentator tonight. We are pleased to be here. We're on the visitor side. We're kind of low, guys, but we're still going to get a good view of the game, and we think you're going to get a good view also on the live stream tonight. Now, we want to tell you that we don't have quite the internet signal here at Claude Mann Stadium that we've had on some of the other road games. So if you see a problem you might stop and then restart your feed because we might have to make adjustments during the game ourselves depending on how the feed holds up. But right now we've got a clear picture. We hope you have a clear picture and we believe we're gonna be able to bring you the game on a live stream video as well as audio tonight. So we hope that that is the case. If again, there is any problem with your picture tonight, stop your feed and then start it again. And hopefully that will take care of it as we may have to make some adjustments as we go through the evening. We are very pleased to be here to bring you this game. It is the last game of the regular season, and it has been quite a season, Jack Bennington, as the Arkadelphia Badgers started 0-5 and now have a chance to win their fifth game in a row. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, um, from the first half of the season to the second, obviously starting 0-5, uh, kind of had the team in a bit of tor turmoil. I'm not sure um, if the Badgers will make the playoff, but these last four games, won them all, um, and now trying to go for a fifth win to finish the season at 500. Um, definitely the second half has been um, against our easier opponents, but still nonetheless, the Badgers have gone out week by week and got the job done, and we hope for the same tonight. Jack, let's bring in Caleb Bird, who did play-by-play. -play. Thank you so much for that last week. Caleb, i tell you what. If you are anywhere else in the state and you look at this matchup, you figure it's an easy win for Arkadelphia because Malvern has struggled so much this year, and yet when you have two rivals get together, you never really know what's going to happen. Arkadelphia has to be ready to play this game tonight. Yeah, I like any game. Arkadelphia, if they don't come out to play tonight, they have a chance to lose. They're watching the Malvern team warm up. They have a lot of players, and they have a lot of athletes on the field. Um, honestly, watching their warm ups, it was kind of surprising they haven't won a game yet. They, they didn't play an extremely strong uh, lineup to start the season. They had a close game with uh, Hot Springs Lakeside, I think, to start out the season. So this is a team that has a lot of athletes and some good players. Uh, and if Arkadelphia doesn't come out to play, the, you know the Malvern players are ready because this is senior night and this is a rivalry against Arkadelphia. The Malvern High School Band will play the national anthem. We're going to do our best to see if we can pick it up enough to bring it to you. So here is our national anthem. 
Oh, they're doing the alma mater first. I can I can make it out on the far side, and that is not the national anthem, Jack. That is the alma mater there, uh, starting with Arkadelphia, and then they're going to go to Malvern. We're we're not quite close enough to the Arkadelphia band. They're playing across the field and and down to our right, so we can't quite pick that up well enough to bring it to you. But when the Malvern band plays, they'll be coming directly across the field at us, and we think we can pick up the national anthem in a couple of moments. So let me take a moment to just say thank you to all of our sponsors. These are the folks that have been able to bring us this live video web, web stream all year long. Roger Wingfield, State Farm Insurance. Thank you so much, Roger. Austin, the Wingfield family, State Farm Insurance, a part of Arkadelphia for so, so long part of our sponsors bringing you this action tonight and all season long. Taylor King Law. Obviously, Taylor King Law has been meaningful also to uh, Arkadelphia in a lot of ways and especially proud that they're going to bring us this uh, live stream tonight. We're hearing the uh, alma mater from Malvern and we'll have the national anthem here in just a few moments. Southwest Sporting Goods, longtime sponsor of everything athletic in Arkadelphia. They're a sponsor tonight, along with Rogers, Turner, Manning, and Plyler, LLC. Appreciate them. Welch Funeral Home, one of our sponsors all season long for multiple seasons now. Eddie Arnold of Jostens and also Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. I can tell you firsthand, these are good people at Twin Rivers, and Jostens has been the company that Eddie has been known for for many, many years. We thank him for sponsorship for this broadcast. Also, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts. David Goodman and the folks down at Mary and Martha's doing a great job. We appreciate their sponsorship. Southern Bank Corps supporting Arkadelphia every single day. Arnold Batson, Turner & Turner, we want to say thank you to that firm for their hard work and their support of Arkadelphia Public Schools. Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, former Badger himself. We appreciate Blake and all that he does for Arkadelphia also. And then, of course, the two doctors, Drs. Rob and Gary Rucker, for their hard work and for their dedication to Arkadelphia as well. We are so pleased to have these sponsors bringing you the live video web stream for the first year this year. Got off to a start where we were kind of learning what would work and what wouldn't work. And lo and behold, it was figured out by our own Chris Babb. And he got some help from Dave Osmond and some other folks. And been able to bring you a good picture. We want to tell you one more time, if you have trouble with the live stream tonight, and it is a possibility because the internet is not as strong here as in some of the locations where we have been, just stop and restart. We'll make adjustments on the fly if we need to, and you should be able to pick up the game on video as well as audio tonight. Well, the junior ROTC folks from Malvern High School are making their way out to the middle of the field, and we'll have the national anthem very soon. So we'll pause now for our national anthem. The left guard is Cadet Captain Acacia Hunter. Raising the flag at the West End is Cadet Private Veronica Jurgensen, Cadet Second Lieutenant Dominique Harper, and Cadet Staff Sergeant Bradley Jackson. Singing our national anthem this evening will be Miss Casey Cothern. Casey is a senior and the daughter of Frank and Susie Cothern. She's a member of the Malvern High School a cappella choir.
live rendition of our national anthem as we are in pregame activities here in Malvern. Once again, the Arkadelphia Badgers are looking for a fifth win in a row. It's a meaningful thing as after five games, Caleb, it was an 0-5 team, and people wondered if they would bounce back. They've answered that question. Yeah, they have bounced back. Uh, four wins on the bounce, and uh, win today will put them at 500 for the season. That's something not a lot of Badger fans would have thought after that 0-5 uh, start. So this team has really shown a lot of character to turn around and uh, really led by those seniors last week. They put together almost a perfect senior night against Fox uh, beating the number two, three team in the state by 12 points on the night, and now coming out tonight, and you know they're ready to play their last regular season game uh, as Badgers. The last time we were in this press box, it looked a lot like it does right now, but the last time we were in this press box here on the visitor side in Malvern, I was surprised by how well Arkadelphia played. It had been a season with its ups and downs, and suddenly they scored 63 points and blasted into the playoffs as a hot team. Arkadelphia has already turned this season around, and yet a big win tonight by the Badgers could be meaningful, Jack, as they move into the playoffs. Yeah, obviously, um, you, you obviously want to end the regular season with a win, but it's even more important playing against uh, Malvern, uh, a rival like Malvern is to Arkadelphia. So definitely, I think both teams are going to go into the night hungry for a win, especially for the Badgers, as they look to enter the playoffs next week. Well, it's senior night here in Malvern, but Arkadelphia has some outstanding seniors who are captains who are on the field right now, and we're just about to have the march out to the middle of the field and then the coin toss. Arkadelphia, I would assume, would love to have the ball first, Caleb, and put some points on the, on the board early against a Malvern team that has not scored much this year, only 61 points in nine games. Yeah, Arkadelphia definitely is going to want to start with the football um, you know the goal is going to be to put this game out of hand before halftime. So getting a um, getting a score on the first possession would definitely go a long way towards doing that. Um, putting those 35 points up by halftime and getting some of the freshmen in playing time in the second half. Uh, but it has to start with a touchdown on the first drive. So you'd have to guess Arkadelphia's going to want to start really strong in this game. Uh, you know and get some rest in before the playoff. Jack, it's a really strong Arkadelphia contingent here on the visitor side, the home side. Still some empty space there, but they're coming out for senior night in pretty good shape. The Arkadelphia side is going to be completely full here on the visitor side as the Badgers always, Badger fans, always follow their team and certainly is the case only 20 miles away here in Malvern. Yeah, the, the Malvern visitor side isn't very big, so Arkadelphia travels well anywhere, but especially um, to Malvern being such a big rivalry and only, like you said, 20 minutes away. Um, so big game for the Badger fans tonight as well as the football team, and these fans are ready for it. Looks like Arkadelphia is going to move from our right to our left as we see that Arkadelphia has won the toss and Arkadelphia has elected to, to receive. The script is working perfectly so far. Yeah, it is. You see out there on the field is the belt for the uh, College of the Ozarks Rumble on the River matchup. So the winner of this game is going to get a belt uh, as their trophy. The Koto belt is up for grabs right now. Arkadelphia would like to score on this first possession and let it be known that they intend to wear that belt home. Arkadelphia lining up to greet its players as they come onto the field. Well, I, I tell you what, we've started our night well, too. Uh, Mel's Dairy Barn is not a bad mm. place to go, don't you think, Jack? Yeah, I think it was pretty good. I mean, that burger and uh, fries, and uh, I think Caleb got a milkshake, so definitely I was experienced that I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm back there sometime soon. Well, I'll tell you what, we always win the meal on this crew, <laughs> and uh, we most, most of the time we win the game, too. We'll see if that happens tonight for Arkadelphia. One more time, let me mention our sponsors tonight for the live web stream. stream. It is Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance, Taylor King Law, Southwest Sporting Goods, Rogers, Turner, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Eddie Arnold of Jostens, and also Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Marion Marcus, Florist and Gifts, Southern Bank Corps, Arnold Batson, and Turner and Turner, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, and Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. And I guess you can tell by the crowd noise behind us that not only are we on the visitor side, but we are right among the Arkadelphia fans because there is no glass, no windows at all in this press box. We like crowd noise, and Caleb, we're going to get a lot of it tonight. Yeah, we'll get a lot. There's fans on either side of the press box. The door's wide open. The windows are wide open. And so uh, you'll hear a lot of cheering, a lot of cowbells, and hopefully... 
hopefully you'll hear a lot of cheering from these Arkadelphia fans and uh, they can put together a good performance for the crowd that's come out tonight. So Arkadelphia will get the kickoff and will get started. The Badgers are getting ready to come onto the field. Malvern is on the home side already. Arkadelphia has the band here, the state champion band. We'll talk more about them as we go through the evening and we'll also talk about the Arkadelphia Badger football team and all the good things going on in Arkadelphia. Chris Babb will be our halftime guest. He's the communication director for the Arkadelphia Public Schools and he's got a lot of good news to give you about things happening all through K through 12, pre-K really through 12 with Arkadelphia. Malvern is set to kick off and they have a senior kicker who's really quite good. His name is Michael Cervantes. He's a senior, has been their starting kicker for three years now and has done a fine job. He is in his last high school game as a kicker as uh, Malvern will not be going to the playoffs. His kick is an onside kick recovered by Arkadelphia at the 49 yard line of Malvern. Excellent job by the Arkadelphia Badgers, Javante Brown. He showed some good hands and recovered the onside kick to begin the game. Yeah, I, I love that for Malvern to start the game with an onside kick. They're 0-9 on the year. What do they have to lose? Come out and bring it to Arkadelphia. They showed it right there. They're going to be bringing it tonight. Doesn't matter what the record is, and they want to win this game. Arkadelphia, though, because of the good hands of Brown, will start with great field position. First down and 10, Badgers at the Malvern, 49-yard line. First play from scrimmage coming your way momentarily. Brown is out there. He's going to line up wide to the right side, far side of the field. Three backs, and they're going to send one in motion, and now they're going to line up and go with an end around. No, it's a keeper. This is the quarterback. Good run by Turner. He's got a hole. He's got 10. He's got 15 across the 30 to the 29-yard line. Excellent run on first down by Cannon Turner. Yeah, some trickery there from the Badger offense to start this drive, um, lining up with four wide receivers on the right side and then shifting Rubel to the left side and then motioning Zahn Hatley. But Cannon Turner keeps the ball that time and runs right through this Malvern defense. And now in a... Uh, Leopard territory. Rubel in motion. Turner calling out the snap count. Cannon Turner now sees in motion. Hatley throws across the middle, complete to Witten, but he's hit very hard and dropped the ball at the 10 yard line. The safety got there just after the ball did. And it's good to see Witten back up again because he took a huge hit. Yeah, that was a really nice play by the safety there. KJ Burks. Witten was wide open across the middle of the field. He bounced out from the tight end position. They faked the run again and uh, I'm sure Witten, Turner, the whole coaching staff, everyone thought there was going to be a touchdown there for the Badgers, but Burks came out of nowhere, knocked the ball out of Witten's hands with a big hit. So nice defensive play there from the safety. Second down, 10 yards to go. Arkadelphia lines up at the 29-yard line of Malvern. Turner wants to keep it to the short side of the field. He goes. It gets a block. He's to the 25. They're going to drag him down at the 22-23 yard line perhaps. Boy, it looked like a horse collar, but I guess he had him by the jersey, so no call was made, no penalty, and it is going to be third down for Arkadelphia after the game. They're going to need between four and five yards. Let's see where they're going to spot the ball. Well, four yards. They spotted at the 23-yard line. Yeah, good run to the outside there from Cannon Turner. Definitely did look like a horse collar tackle, but nonetheless, the Badgers now are third and short. Hatley is the running back. He's not carried the ball yet for Arkadelphia. Turner looks to the sideline to get the play. He's got... Tatamy in the game, split wide to the left side, two to the right side. It is Hatley. Hatley has a first down. Flags go down, though. He breaks a tackle. He's inside the 10-yard line to the 5-yard line, still moving all the way to the end zone, but there is a flag down in the backfield. I think this might come back. Yeah, that was a really nice run from Hatley. The flag came down just as he hit the hole, so I bet it's going to be a holding, uh, likely on the pulling guard, you know, holding the middle linebacker there in the hole. But still, it was a really nice run there from Hatley after he got through the hole. He broke five or six tackles to get in the end zone. It looked like it was going to be down to the 10, and he just kept running and fell in the end zone. Unfortunate for him that uh, that's not going to be counted towards yardage total, not going to be counted towards his touchdown total. But still, that would be a nice clip for his huddle film after, after the season's over. They're going to spot the ball at the 36-yard line. From the 36-yard line, Arkadelphia is going to make it down to the 19 to pick up a first. Third down over again, third and long, and flags go down. Arkadelphia, I think, moved before the snap. Yeah, the formation was off on the far side. Arkadelphia trying to run trips on the far side, and the receivers were just in the wrong spot, trying to switch right before the ball was snapped. Can't do that, so a legal shift on the Badgers. 
So two key penalties against Arkadelphia and the ball's at the 41 yard line all of a sudden. Third down and very long. Got to make it to the 19 to have a first down. The Badgers line up with Tatamy to the left side. He's a threat. And then three receivers to the right side. Turner wants to throw to Tatamy. He throws deep. Tatamy fighting for the football. He cannot get there incomplete. And Arkadelphia has fourth down. Uh, that, that might be one of the first times I've seen Victor Tatamy drop a ball this year. The ball went right through his hands, bounced off his knee and into the end zone. Tatamy did a nice job to beat the cornerback there. It was Cervantes, the kicker, playing cornerback. And Tatamy ran right past him. And the ball went right through his hands. So... Unfortunate not to get a first down there, but uh, Arkadelphia now is fourth and very long, gonna go for it. They're gonna go for it at the 41 yard line of Malvern. Or will they quick kick? That might be what we see. Here's Cannon Turner, he will kick it, and his kick will not be fielded. It'll bounce inside the 10, it bowls to the end zone and into the end zone. So Malvern will get the ball at the 20 yard line. Arkadelphia got good field position, and Jack, without a penalty, Perhaps would have had a touchdown. It was called back, and then they went backwards with a penalty. Incomplete pass. Had to punt the ball away. But still, Arkadelphia will make Malvern start back at its own 20. Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of caliber team you're playing. Penalties are going to kill you, and we saw that there on that drive. Um, Arkadelphia not being able to capitalize on the good field position, giving the ball back to Malvern, and they'll start on their own 20. Malvern has first down at 10. At its own 20 yard line, first possession, they're gonna run it. Up the middle they'll go and there's nowhere to go. He got back to the line of scrimmage, Caleb, maybe a half yard. Yeah, nothing going there for Malvern. It does a good job with the Arkadelphia interior defensive line to stuff that play, uh, plug the gaps and not let the running back squeeze through. So Badger defense gonna need to come up with a stop here. You really would expect it, Arkadelphia score on that first drive with a good field position and then the big plays, uh, just unable to do so due to the penalty. So the defense is going to have to come out and make a stop here, keep this game uh, going according to the script. Quarterback is Braxton Allen. He's only a sophomore. But he's got good size at 6'3". They'll shift players to the right side and run right up the middle, and there's, again, nowhere to go. He's back to the line of scrimmage, not much more than that. It's third down and long. Yeah, nothing doing there once again. Pretty much the same play from Malvern, just trying to run up the middle. But the batters absolutely stuffed at the running back for Malvern. Had no room whatsoever to run the football through. And once again, um, Gaina looks to be about zero on that play. Yeah, they've run two plays right up the middle and gotten nothing out of it. Third down, 10 yards to go. They've had some turnover, as you might expect, on a team that's 0-9. And, and so Braxton Allen has become the starting quarterback now as a sophomore. He's got some good potential for the future, and he's going to pass. He will fire it down the left sideline, bat it down incomplete, and it's fourth and ten. Yeah, Victor Tatamy is going to make the pass to break up there, but he was not covering the receiver, uh, the intended receiver on the play. Tatamy was covering a different receiver, running a crossing route in front. Uh, the receiver Tatamy was running was running a crossing route in front of a vertical route on the far sideline. Tatamy jumped up about three foot vertical and knocked it out of the air away from the intended receiver who's about 10 yards behind him. So nice play there from Victor Tatamy. There's a high snap, but he will be able to kick it. A nice punt, fieldable for Haney. Haney's got it at the 50s, up to the 45, 40 yard line, 35 yard line, to the 30, to the 20, and knocked out of bounds. Really nice return there from Dylan Haney getting inside the 20 yard line, but tell you what, that was all made possible on a nice block from Kyron Harrison, just as uh, Haney caught the football. Harrison put a really nice block on um, uh, on a defender from Malvern. Usually that kind of block that, that Haney made would be called as a block in the back, but uh, Kyron Harrison was able to get right in front of him and block him from the shoulder pads and uh, free up some space from Haney to run and get this good field position for Arkadelphia. First down 10, Arkadelphia, 14-yard line of Malvern. Turner at quarterback will hand off. Here's Hatley. He's looking for a hole. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, pick up a yard. That's probably about it. Second down, nine yards to go. Yeah, that time not as much room for Zion Hatley. Um, Cannon Turner handing the ball off. Um, good play there from the defensive line of Malvern. Um, just not really creating any holes whatsoever for the senior running back to run through. And as a result, Hatley was only able to pick up one. Hatley to the left of his quarterback, slightly behind Cannon Turner. In motion, now setting up on the right side behind the tackle is Rubel. In motion goes Buster. He's going to run. This is Turner to the left side. Gets a good block. He's inside the 10. He's to the 8. He's to the 7. He's hard to tackle. He's near the 5-yard line. Yeah, nice running there from Cannon Turner on the left side. Uh, and he, he was able to break some blocks there and show a bit of his power. 
Cannon is a is a type of runner that has a lot of speed. You know, he's one of the best uh, track stars in the conference, but he also has a lot of power, and he showed it on that play, running through a couple defenders and picking up yards the hard way. Ball at the five-yard line, third down, one yard to go for Arkadelphia. Turner at quarterback, Hatley next to him. They're going to hand it to Hatley. Hatley is hit but struggles forward. I think he's got a first down as he is down to the two, maybe three-yard line, but a first down and goal. Yeah, just some downhill running there from Zion Hatley, just trying to get in the end zone and trying to pick up the first down. I think he was able to pick up one of those in the first down. Um, looks to be for the Badgers. We'll get another quick play here. From the two, first down to the right side, Hatley, touchdown, Arkadelphia. Yeah, good job by Zion Hatley there, uh, being patient on that play. It was a goal line play, but Arkadelphia got to the line quickly, uh, didn't let Malvern switch up their defense, still in their base package. Uh, that meant Arkadelphia could run a normal cup of play there, a power run to the right. Hatley waited for the hole to open up. It did, and then he ran across the right side and uh, got his touchdown. Arkadelphia will line up to go for two. They'll try a different formation. Turner, quarterback sneak, he's got it. Arkadelphia has converted on a two-point conversion. The need for that is just practice, guys. You never know in the playoffs if you might want to run a two-point conversion. Tried a different formation at work that time. Arkadelphia just giving the opponent something to think about. And that was the, one of the strangest formations <laughs> I've seen. They lined up in what almost looked like a field goal formation, motioned out of it. Turner went up under center with no one to the left of the center whatsoever, and he just <laughs> ran right behind the center into the into the end zone. It was like no one, no one thought to cover up the center and keep Turner from sneaking into the end zone. So... Interesting formation there, but it worked for Arkadelphia. They got eight points. Arkadelphia eight, Malvern nothing. I cannot see the scoreboard, but I think there is some time left. Let's see. 8.03 left is what we we're seeing in the first quarter. I can see a lot. This is I don't mind broadcasting from this low position on the visitor side because we get the crowd and we're close to the action. But the, um, I don't know, the scoreboard's in foul territory over there. I can hardly... Uh, get close to it. Anyway, Arkadelphia is set to kick off. Leading eight to nothing. Here comes Gabe Goodman's kick, and it is an onside kick, and he has recovered his own onside kick. How about that? Yeah, and that play worked about perfectly, because it looks like Goodman, I don't think anyone from Melbourne really saw where the ball went, because Goodman ran his foot over the top of the ball, then ran in front of it. Everyone from the Arkadelphia team is running in front of the football. Goodman just turned around and fell on it, so he really confused everyone in the stadium on that play. It looked like he just miskicked it. You usually don't see that from Goodman. You're expected to go in the back of the end zone. Arkadelphia gave uh, Malvern a taste of their own medicine there with an onside kick. The best thing about being near the crowd is that I can watch now as Jason Jones explains the play to Gabe's mother, who is now <laughs> celebrating in the stands. Just fantastic. Arkadelphia with the ball on first down, a pass. Here's a pass into the flat. Hatley's got it to the 40. He's at the 30 to the 21 man to beat to the 10. He's got a touchdown. What a play there from Cannon Turner, just throwing it out to the left side. Two's on Hatley, just no, no. No man there whatsoever to cover him. He just runs up the left side and gets by one defender into the end zone. A great play there from the Badgers again. Striking, I think, was just maybe 10 seconds ran off the clock between touchdowns, and the Badgers are now at 14 to nothing already. Goodman will kick this extra point. Arkadelphia would like to make it 15 to 0. Here's the kick. It is up, and as always, it is perfect. And so it's Arkadelphia 15, Malvern 0, with 7.54 left in the first quarter. Well, it's been a lot of fun so far, guys. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> I mean, after that first touchdown, you just kind of thought this defense would come back out here, and then the Badgers pulled out on the kickoff, and then first play on that drive, uh, absolutely perfect execution from the Badgers so far in this game. Yeah, Arkadelphia wanted to make up for those early mistakes on that first drive where they didn't get a score. They made up for it real quick with the onside kick and the quick touchdown pass. You also just don't get complacent when you get to try some new things, right? That's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I think Coach Eldridge is giving those playoff teams they're going to face some extra things to think about you as bet. they come into this and in, into the time where you, you only have one week to prepare and watch film and you're not, you're not really knowing who you're going to play. And so that's going to give the playoff teams a lot to think about going in. Uh, to that next phase of the season. Well, we've seen two onside kicks already tonight. It did not work for Malvern. It did for Arkadelphia. Badgers lead at 15 to nothing. We're not quite midway through the quarter yet. Here's Goodman's kick, and this time it is high, it is long, and is going to land in the end zone. Touchback. 
All right, Goodman with the onside kick recovery on the first uh, on the first kickoff. The second one goes into the back of the end zone. So he's showing some versatility here. Malvern has the ball, first down and 10 at its own 20. In the first possession, Malvern ran the ball for zero yardage, ran the ball for zero yardage, and threw an incomplete pass. So they do not have any yards yet in the football game. Once again, they have a sophomore quarterback who I think, Caleb, is going to be a good one in the future. He's 6'3". He's got a pretty good arm, got a little bit of presence back there, but only a sophomore trying to work against this Arkadelphia defense. Now two backs, one on each side of the quarterback, and a blocking back. Running formation for Malvern, but he wants to pass. He'll throw it short, and he'll throw it incomplete. Tried to throw a little screen pass to the right, but it was read by... Wallace more than anyone else. He was out there, and there was no chance for Malvern to make yardage on that play. Yeah, I'm not sure who the intended receiver was there. I'm not sure why there wasn't an intentional grounding because there was absolutely no one in the area. There was about five Badger defenders around the football when it hit the ground, and they were definitely the closest players to the ball. So I'm not really sure what the goal was on that play, uh, but it definitely didn't work out for Malvern. And Wallace knew that play better than the receiver did, I believe, but at any rate, second down and 10, Malvern still does not have any yardage yet in the ball game. They're going to run it. Here is a run. He's going to fake it to the left, go back to the right, go up the middle, and not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, it's hard playing against this Badgers defensive line uh, for any team, but especially when the running back kind of just stands there not knowing where to go as soon as he um, receives the ball. And by the time he thought about it for a couple seconds, he was already being tackled by four Badger defenders on that play. And as a result, it's a loss of three on the play. And that's a loss of three in total yardage. They're <laughs> negative three in total yards so far. It's the first quarter, but Arkadelphia already leads at 15 to nothing and looking now to get good field position if they can hold on third and 13. They're going to send pressure against the quarterback. He'll throw a short pass that is incomplete. Even a completion there, Caleb, I don't think would have gained anything. No, I don't think it would have. Kyron Harrison was playing good defense on the receiver, and the quarterback's trying to lead him a little bit too much out to the sideline. So uh, here we have two drives, two drives so far, and um, two times that the Malvern has been able to get in yards. We'll see if they can put the Arkadelphia on the other side of the 50 now. No one has played on the Arkadelphia side of the field yet tonight. Malvern's been stuck back on the other side of the field, and Arkadelphia's been playing offense on the Malvern side of the field as well. Cervantes is a good kicker. He gets a high snap, but he does get the kick away. It is a little bit shorter this time. It will be allowed to bounce, and it will bounce to the 50, and now back to the Malvern side of the 50. Oh, my. Uh. Yeah, like I said, I, I, might, I might have jinxed Cervantes there. I said, I don't know if they're going to get rid of the 50, and the ball bounced right at the 48. Looks like it's going to bounce over the 50, and then it turned around and bounced back to the Malvern side of the 50. So, Arkadelphia is going to have the ball on the right side of the 50 once again. Uh, and this is a really good field position for the Badgers to put up another touchdown. Cannon Turner out at quarterback. He's got Hatley in the game to his left. Rubel is the blocking back to the right side. They're going to send Buster in motion. Hand it to Hatley. Hatley to the right side has four, five, six, seven yards and more. Good running by Hatley. I think he's got a first down. Yeah, yards after contact is big in Zion Hatley's run game. And that time it looked like he was hit after about five yards, but just kept driving his feet through to the fender and was able to pick up what we think is the first down. It actually looks like to be a yard short, but nonetheless, the great run from Zion Hatley on that first down play. The spot did put the ball about a half yard short of a first down. So on second down, another handoff. Here's Hatley hitting the backfield this time. He breaks that tackle and makes the first down. A gain of only a couple, but that's enough for a first down. Yeah, good running there from Hatley on the second effort. He got hit in the backfield. Looks like he was going to lose a few yards, but he spun out of that tackle and then fought forward for a first down. So good effort there from Hatley, and he knew where the marker was, and he uh, picked up that first down. You know, against a, a team that, that hasn't really put up as much of a fight as Malvern has, you think that Arkadelphia might try. Uh, Arkadelphia players might be looking for the home run, but Hatley's paying attention to the details and fighting for the small yards. Buster is in motion. They're going to hand it off, and he's got some room on the right side. On the far sideline, he's got five. He's got close to another first down. I think he might have another first down. Good running by the young one. Yeah, good run, good run there from the Badgers on that play. Buster Thomas was able to get it out to the right side and pick up a first down on the play. Um, okay. Sorry for my uh, uh, loss of attention there for a moment, but his shooting star just shot by. and I, every, I think this side of the stadium really enjoyed that. We've had a little bit of everything tonight. Holy cow. 
All right. First down and 10, Arkadelphia, and they're going to run the ball with Cannon Turner. Cannon Turner is going to cut back across the field. Good move to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. He breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Arkadelphia. I think Cannon Turner might have seen the shooting star as well and wished for a touchdown because he just got one. A good run from Cannon Turner and seven more points. We're not even halfway through the first quarter here, and the Badgers already have over 20 points on the scoreboard. Wow, Arkadelphia 21 to nothing, going for 22 with the extra point by Gabe Goodman coming. What a tremendous run by Cannon Turner. Goodman is set, Turner is the holder. The snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is up, and it is right down the middle. Arkadelphia 22, Malvern 0, now with 525 left, and we are in the first quarter tonight. Arkadelphia completely dominating. We are pleased to be on KDEL FM 100.9 in Arkadelphia, and we'll take a one-minute break. And the live stream right back here with you as we go through some of our sponsors for the live stream. Pleased to be able to talk about our live stream sponsors every week. On the live stream, you're seeing some of the visuals go through, and I'd be glad to mention them also. We want to say thank you to Drs. Rob and Gary Rucker, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, Arnold Batts and Turner and Turner Southern Bank Corps, Marion Martha's Florist and Gifts, Eddie Arnold of Jostens, and also Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Welch Funeral Home, Rogers, Turner, Manning, and Plyler, Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King Law, and Roger Wingfield State Farm Insurance. Our live stream sponsors for this game and all season long. Also, of course, we have radio sponsors. Pleased to be with you on KDEL FM 100.9 in Arkadelphia. Arkadelphia Badgers now set to kick off yet again. The Badgers lead it 22 to nothing, and we're still in the first quarter. Here's a kick, it's high, it's deep, and it will land in the end zone. You cannot return it from the end zone in a high school football game. And so once again, Arkadelphia has the advantage of not allowing a kickoff return. Yeah, Arkadelphia uh, doing a good job there. Goodman once again putting the ball in the end zone. He's been perfect tonight in his kicking game. Two kicks in the end zone, one onside kick recovery, and two extra points made. Gabe Goodman has been the perfect kicker tonight, uh, and that really gives Arkadelphia a bit of an advantage because now Malvern has to start their own 20-yard line, and they haven't been able to get anything going on offense yet tonight. Uh, actually, literally nothing. They have negative three yards in total offense. They're going to line up with three receivers to the right side, one running back in the shotgun next to the quarterback. He is going to fake it and run it and fall down. Ricky Rogers, Jr., with a sack. Yeah, now they have negative eight yards in total offense. That's a loss of five on the sack. Good job by Ricky Rogers, and quarterback just got confused and fell down. He let Rogers fall down on top of him uh, to get counted with that sack. So good job by Arkansas's defensive line to get some pressure on the football and drop him back a little bit further. Forward progress gave him the 16-yard line, so he lost four on the play. Second down, 14 yards to go, and as Caleb said, Negative yardage and total yardage so far for Malvern. We're in the first quarter, of course, but Arkadelphia scored 22, and Malvern has not made a yard yet. They have not had a positive play yet. Here is a running play, draw play up the middle. This is going to get a yard, maybe two yards, not back to the original line of scrimmage, though. That's still they had a positive play. So finally they got they got some yards there on that run, two of them. Uh, now it's going to be third and 12. Likely going to see Malvern go to the air again. Quarterback hasn't shown much accuracy uh, yet tonight, but he's still a sophomore playing against a good Badger secondary. Maybe he just needs to feel his way into the game, get a little bit more comfortable throwing the ball tonight in, in some cold weather. He throws a good ball, but so far he has not been able to hit a receiver with one of those. We'll see if it happens on this play. Third down, 12 yards to go for Malvern, and he will pass. He looks to the sideline, leads his receiver. He's got him a touch. He got it. He held on on the near sideline. That's a first down out at the 37-yard line. There's the sophomore throwing a nice pass, Jack. Yeah, good catch there by uh, Malvin receiver number seven, Dante Reed, um, catching the football, having to just kind of reach his arms out and was able to pull it down and fall down, but still able to pick up the first down. Good throw by the sophomore quarterback, Allen, and an even better catch by the wide receiver, Reed. Allen is 6'3". He's got a good view of the field, and he had some touch on that pass and got a first down from the 37-yard line. They'll go with first and 10 and hand it off. But Arkadelphia is right there, and it might be a gain of one when they spot the ball, but several Badgers are there to make the tackle. Yeah, nice quick uh, handoff there from Malmer, and they got the play going quickly there. They're running back. We've seen some hesitation from him earlier in the game. That's how he picked his hole deliberately. Arkadelphia is right there to meet him, though. 
Good job. It looked like uh, well, it looked like it was uh, Terrell Sumler up there for the stop. So he did a good job. The defensive tackle getting in there, standing in the hole, and making a good tackle. Second down, nine yards to go. Melvin might go back to the air. Now they are going to pass, but he's in trouble, and he's going to be sacked again inside the 30-yard line. Arkadelphia quickly getting to the quarterback. The Sumler there once again breaking through the offensive line, and uh, there was about four or five badgers, but Sumler was on leading the pack, and I think uh, the Malvern quarterback saw the pressure there, decided he didn't want to get hit, and just fell down and took a sack rather than uh, risking an injury there. So with the loss, it's third down and 19, just under three minutes to play in the first quarter. Arkadelphia 22, Malvern 0. In the shotgun formation, he's going to throw this one quick, I think. Now he's going to run the ball. He's got a little room to the near side, but not nearly enough, and they're going to knock him down short of the original line of scrimmage. So it is fourth down and long. Yeah, a good play there from Allen to try and make it to the outside. Didn't really have any receivers open, so tried to run it himself, and that time wasn't able to pick up many yards at all. I'm able to pick up a couple, but the Badgers defenders were, able, were quick in getting on him on that play, and they bring up fourth and long. Yeah, the sophomore quarterback really slow in getting up and getting off the field. Going to have to hope that he's okay. They really want to see him get some experience tonight. Two Badgers back to receive the punt. It's Victor Tatamy and Carlos Haney. A very high, slow snap, but he does get it away. And then we've got a flag down, and it will be roughing the, pat the kicker, I believe. Arkadelphia will have a short return by Haney. But let's see what happens. I thought that was a close call, Jack, as there was a collision between a blocker and Arkadelphia. And the Arkadelphia Badger, who I believe was Patrick McLean, did make contact with the punter. But you might argue that he was blocked into him. Yeah, it was another high snap to the punter of Malvern. And Patrick McLean was coming from the left side and got around the block of it from our vantage point. It looks like the blocker pushed him in to the punter, but the referees didn't see it that way. And uh, more likely than not, it looks like it'll be a first down for Malvern coming up here. Carlos Haney also injured on the play. We'll have to hope that he is going to bounce right back up and be okay. Waiting for the officials to make the call and mark off the penalty. And we have a break in the action for a moment. To see if this is either called running into the kicker or roughing the kicker on this play. Be a five-yard penalty versus a 15-yard during the first down. They are taking their time and marking off the penalty as we are also seeing some attention to the injured Badger on the play. We'll keep it right here, though, because it'll be a key as to whether or not it could possibly be a first down. It was fourth and 15. And with the break for the injury, we are seeing a longer break than we expected, so we'll take a radio break. We'll be back with more on KDEL in 30 seconds. And for the live stream, we are right back here with you. Looks like Carlos Haney is going to be able to stand up and walk off the field momentarily. He took a hit to the abdomen, I believe, and looks like he's going to bounce back from that. It's going to be all right. Hope to see him up and around momentarily. In the meantime, we have not seen the officials mark off a penalty, but we did see the punter go down in a collision with an Arkadelphia Badger. Good to see Haney is going to be all right. He's going to walk off the field now. Arkadelphia fans giving him a nice ovation as he walks off the field under his own power. Still waiting to see where they're going to spot the football. Going to be a personal foul against Arkadelphia, so it wasn't just running into the kicker, and they did not rule that he was blocked into the kicker. They ruled it as a personal foul, and that's going to give Malvern a first down for the Leopards at their own 48-yard line. They have two first downs now in the game, one on a pass play, and one on a penalty. Arkadelphia, meanwhile, has scored 22 points in the quarter, just under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Arkadelphia 22, Malvern nothing. Shotgun formation, and the young sophomore is going to be out of the game. They bring in a new quarterback. Here's a handoff to the left side across the 50 to the Arkadelphia 47 yard line. The new quarterback is Andre Luton. He's a junior, 5'10", 217, more of a runner. And now they're going to check the sophomore back into the game. Braxton Allen was slow in getting up when he was tackled on third down, but now he's all right back into the game, and he will line up at quarterback. That was a nice run on that previous play by Malvern. 
uh, nice dancing around some blockers and, and, and getting a nice five-yard gain, and that's what you want to see if you're a Malvern fan tonight. Here is another handoff, this time right up the middle, but Arkadelphia responds well, and there's a gain of maybe one on the play. Third down coming, and a key play for Malvern if they want to try to get back in this game. They really need a score because Arkadelphia scored so fast, and they have built a three-touchdown lead already. Yeah, a lot better play from the Arkadelphia defense there. The first uh, time uh, where Malvern was able to get to the outside and pick up, it looks to be about a couple yards, the Badgers defensive line didn't do a good job of covering the outside, but this time around they did, and Malvern went able to pick up much. Third down, five yards to go. Now down to 43 seconds left in the quarter. Running play, there's a little bit of yardage, but not enough. Arkadelphia will end it before he's got a first down. They're going to lack another yard or two. So they'll probably go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, I have to guess this is four down territory, especially with how Malvern's been playing tonight. They've been at, uh, bringing out a bit of a more aggressive playbook, you know, opening the game with that onside kick. So now this is some four down territory for Malvern, and uh, they're going to need to get a positive gain here, uh, likely going to go to the ground. Leopards line up. Arkadelphia lines up on defense. Fourth down and two in the shotgun. And he is not able to draw Arkadelphia offside. He'll look to the sideline. I would still think they would go for it. We'll see. Now we're going to see the quarter run out. We have just run to zero on a quarter. And so it is after one quarter of play, Arkadelphia 22, Malvern zero. And we'll be back with more on KDEL in 30 seconds. And on the live stream, we're right back here with you to tell you it was a very exciting first quarter. A little bit scary there as Victor Haney was injured, Jack, but he walked off the field under his own power. That's a good sign. And the Arkadelphia Badgers controlled the game with very, very quick scoring offensive plays and a defense that has been stifling. Yeah, I hate to see that there from Carlos Haney going down, but able to get back up and walk up under his own power. So hopefully he'll be okay. But another news, the Badgers are up 22 nothing after the first quarter after just a dominant um, first quarter from this offense, um, just going at this Leopards defense time and time again, um, just catching them off, off guard in so many um, different ways. Um, and just like we thought, the Badgers were up by a lot here after the first quarter. Um, but still, uh, Malvern has the football here in good position. Um, fourth and one, crucial play for this um, Malvern offense um, if they want to continue to this drive and hopefully um, strive, for the, strive for a touchdown here. Um, so big play for both of these teams in this drive. And once again, if Arkadelphia wins, they're going to be the number three seed and play in Arkadelphia next week. But there are important games going on elsewhere in the conference, and we'll get a score update from Caleb after this play. So Malvern is to the line of scrimmage on fourth down. They'll quick it, quickly snap it, running into the Arkadelphia interior line and not making the first down is the Malvern running back, London Florence. Just had nowhere to go. He's a 210-pound running back, but he hit a stone wall and did not make the first down. What about the score update, Caleb? Yeah, around the conference, uh, first quarter's ending around the conference. Uh, big game of the week is Robinson, or excuse me, it's uh, Nashville against Boxite. Nashville leads that game in Nashville, I believe. It's seven, oh, it's in Boxite. So at the pit in Boxite, 7-0, uh, Nashville leads that game. And then... Um, and the other game in the conference, Fountain Lake against Ashtown. If Fountain Lake wins, they'll make the playoff. They're tied at seven at the end of the first quarter. Arkadelphia with the possession from the 45-yard line, first down and 10, working on their own end of the field. Running play, this is Hatley. He's to the 50, to the 47, 46-yard line. Good running by Hatley, who's had a very nice start to the game. Zion Hatley, the senior running back. Yeah, good blocking there from this Badgers offense. Zion Hatley was just able to coast on by um, these Malvern defenders and able to pick up what looks to be about eight and a half or nine on the play. Um, good first down run once again from Hatley to bring up another second and short. Second down and two, we'll say, after the eight-yard gain. Blocking back to the right side is Rubel. They're going to bring Buster to the right side in motion and go to the left side with a running play. Here is Hatley. He's got a first down. They're going to spin him around and bring him down, but it's still a first and 10 Arkadelphia as they move to the 42-yard line of Malvern. Yeah, good job there. Once again, Arkadelphia uh, with a run on the left side. Victor Tadme, I mean, excuse me, Zon Hatley. He's doing a good job tonight running the football, uh, and, and he is fully recovered from the injury he suffered earlier in the year, and he's all the way back. He's making guys miss. He's running through tacklers. He's uh, doing a really good job running the football tonight. So, Arkadelphia comes to the line of scrimmage. First down and 10, 42-yard line. In motion comes Rubel. 
Rolling to his left, now back to the right, screen pass. This is a good pass. It's going to be yardage up to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, to the 24-yard line for Terry. Yeah, K.J. Terry with a nice catch there. He caught the ball and had a defender right on him, spun out of a tackle, then showed some speed. I mean, you haven't really seen too much of that speed from Terry yet this year, but Terry listed have 4-5 speed out on the 40-yard dash, and he showed it there. A nice run out across the 25-yard line. So, Arkadelphia from the 24 as a first down and 10, trying to score its fourth touchdown of the game. Cannon Turner, who's run so well and passed well tonight, will hand off on first down. Hatley to the right side. He's got some room. He's to the 15. He's inside the 10. First down and goal. Yeah, another good blocking there from the Arkadelphia Badgers. Uh, the offensive line was able to move up into the second level um, to block these Malvern linebackers. Lon Hatley was just able to go on by once again. That acceleration that we see as soon as he picks up the ball that time, uh, doing a great job there and being able to make it first and goal now for the Badgers. First down, goal to go. Arkadelphia with the ball between the eight. Looks like the nine-yard line, and they're going to go to the fullback. Rubel hit, but he'll struggle for yardage up near the five-yard line. Good running by Alec Rubel. Yeah, nice job there by Rubel going under center uh, and shifting to the I formation. Arkadelphia trying to show a lot of different looks tonight. A lot of things you don't see him run very often, but like we mentioned earlier, all these different looks are going to give those playoff teams something to think about, that Arkadelphia is coming down here with all these different sets. You never know what you're going to see from the Badgers. Ball just short of the five-yard line at second down and goal for Arkadelphia. They're going to hand it off again. This time it's Harrison. He dances. He's close. He's close. Is he in? Yes, it's a touchdown, Arkadelphia. And what another great run. Um, another Badger running back, uh, Kyron Harris on the play. Just dances to the left side, dances by a couple of Malvern defenders, and just couple and just carries a couple of Malvern defenders on his back into the end zone, just barely crossing the goal line. But the Badgers get another touchdown on the board with still over nine minutes left in this first half to make it 28 to nothing. Goodman on to try to make it 29. His kick is up, and his kick is good. Arkadelphia 29, Malvern 0. We are early in the second quarter, and we'll be back with more on KDEL in 30 seconds. On live stream, we're right back with you. Arkadelphia dominating in this game. Now, that's what people across the state expected, guys. But I tell you what, Malvern is a team that has some pride, and it's a team that would like to throw a little spoiler at their arch rival Arkadelphia, but they're unable to do it against the superior speed and size, athletic ability of the Badgers tonight. Arkadelphia really hitting on all cylinders offensively, defensively, and special teams. Arkadelphia's looked really good tonight. Um, all across the board, but as have a lot of teams against Malvern. So Arkadelphia is going to need to get another touchdown in before the half, put that good sportsmanship rule into place. Uh, and that's what they're probably trying to do with that two point to start the game is, is try to have a little bit of a safety net just in case um, there's a, you know, a miscue on an extra point or something. They can get that good sportsmanship rule into place uh, at that halftime break and get some rest for these guys heading into the second half. Plenty of time to do that. Still 9.25 left, second quarter. Arkadelphia 29, Malvern 0. The kick is long, it's high, and it will be fielded at the goal line, but he cannot run it out. It just got to the goal line and was ruled a touchback. Cannot run the ball out of the end zone in high school football. And so three times now, Gabe Goodman has prevented a run back by kicking it to the end zone. He also has recovered his own onside kick earlier in the game in the first quarter. So Goodman has had quite a half himself. Yeah, K.J. Burks caught that ball right at the goal line and thought that both of his feet were out of the end zone, but the referee um, thought otherwise. And um, another touchback there from Gabe Goodman, um, like we, we've expected so many times this season, and he did so uh, a good job once again on the kickoff. Arkadelphia lines up defensively. We see Cannon Turner in at safety. Tremendous athlete. He can play on both sides of the ball. They're going to pitch it. Here's a little end around, but Arkadelphia will force another loss. Oh, my goodness. They're going to push him all the way to the end zone. The ball also came loose, but I believe they blew the whistle before that. So it's going to be a loss, but not a loss of 20 on the pitch. <laughs> the ball's on the 20-yard line, and he got pushed all the way back into the end zone. That was a huge effort from the Arkadelphia defense, and and they're going to give him a, what, a seven-yard loss on that play? That's a huge loss for Malvern, but 
just chuckling at the fact that the Arkadelphia defense just dogpiled him all the way back in the end zone, then knocked the ball out, picked it up, and ran into the end zone. So <laughs> could have been a safety, could have been a touchdown, but they're going to give Malvern the ball at the 13. That's a simple jet sweep, and he lost seven yards on the play. Just, just tremendous work. You try to escape Arkadelphia, and you just lose more yardage as a result. All right, well, loss of eight now officially. On second and 18, here's the running play and a big gainer. This is a good run up the middle by Malvern to the 20-yard line, to the 25, 30-yard line. And that's a bit of a surprise, but a quick handoff, a big hole, and a big gainer. First down to 10 for Malvern. Yeah, kind of surprised. Arkadelphia's defense, a running back from Malvern, just running right around the offensive line um, of Malvern to the left side and just straight up the middle. There's a huge hole with four receivers spreading the field out and is able to pick up a first down on the play. And we'll see up-tempo up here from Malvern. And they are going to hand off again. This time a hit in the backfield. He's going to struggle and get a little bit of yardage up to the 36-yard line. Nelson is in at safety for Arkadelphia. Also in at safety, the starting quarterback, Cannon Turner. We're not seeing... Uh, the young man who was injured earlier, Carlos Haney, in the game right now, but he is walking around on the sidelines. So I don't think, guys, that we see a serious injury there, although they're going to hold him out for good reason, leading 29 to nothing. Yeah, Haney's walking around with his helmet in his uh, hands. So I, I don't think we'll see much more of him. It looks like it was an upper body injury rather than lower body. I'm not surprised he's walking around, but uh, both his arms looking all right, moving, moving well. So uh, I'm sure we'll see more of him next week in the first round of the playoffs. And another running play. They'll go to the right side this time. A big hit by Harrison, and it's a very short game. Third down coming. Yeah, Harrison and Josh Wallace there on the combined tackle, um, bringing down it looks to be uh, Chris Maxey from the from Malvern on offense there. Not really able to pick up many yards on that play. Trying to get out to the right side, but both of those guys were there to take him down immediately. Um, and it looks like it'll be third down here for Malvern. Third down, four, make it three yards to go. Third down and three. And Allen, their sophomore quarterback, hands off. The running play, though, stopped by Turner and a couple of other linebackers. Also some good work on the interior line. And Arkadelphia has stopped Malvern. It's fourth down. Will they punt the ball away? Yeah, per I think they will. Perfect play right there from the linebackers. It was Turner and Wallace. Uh, Cole Turner and Josh Wallace on the inside there. And they had a really nice job there, stopping him right at the line of scrimmage. Played it perfectly as a middle linebacker, reading the guards, meeting the running back at the hole. Uh, and that's going to force a punt from Cervantes. Cervantes is a very good kicker, but his snapper gets it there like a high fly ball. And they will not rush him this time. They'll, he'll send a deep, beautiful punt. It bounces at the 15 to the 5. It'll roll to the 2-yard line. And did they fall on it? I think that it went back into the end zone. They, they just dove at it and couldn't quite get there. So it's first and 10 at the 20. A great effort on the punt and also a great effort on by those uh, flymen on, on the outside for Malvern running down the field full speed, trying to catch up with it, almost getting it. But, you know, maybe six inches into the end zone, they fall on it. And it's going to be Arkadelphia ball at the 20-yard line. Michael Cervantes is a really fine kicker, has been for three years, and that was his best punt of the night. He'll play cornerback now, and Arkadelphia will send its offense onto the field. 80 yards to go to get the touchdown that would send it to good sportsmanship rule in the second half. 29 to nothing, Arkadelphia, midway through the second quarter. Here's a end around, and this is Buster. He's going to cut up. He's got to run to the 30, to the 40. He's to the 50. Great speed to the 40, and they'll knock him out of bounds just before he gets to the 30-yard line of Malvern. Good running. Yeah, great play design from the Badgers. Um, just bringing uh, Buster Thomas in motion um, from the left side, and he already has the acceleration that we've seen um, so many times this season. But already catching the ball in stride, going up the right side, just running by almost all of the Malvern defenders. And the last guy was able to push him out of bounds um, in Leopard territory. But nonetheless, a great run there from um, Buster Thomas. You just love to see it when he hits full speed. What a stride on Buster Thomas. Rolling to his left is Turner. He'll throw the ball incomplete, but there was a hit before the ball got there. Pass interference should be the call against Malvern. Yeah, that's the safety once again from Malvern. He made a big, he made a play like that earlier, but the ball had already touched the hands of the receiver when he made it. That time, uh, just running right through the wide receiver was the safety and uh, ran right through the receiver and slapped the ball down. You can't do that. You got to wait for the receiver to, to make a play on the ball or uh, make a play on the ball without touching the receiver. That time, he basically tackled the receiver and swatted the ball out of the air. 
Major, Easy call. Major penalty against Malvern. They're going to spot the ball at the 17-yard line on the right hash mark. First down and 10 for the Badgers. Arkadelphia leads it 29 to nothing, with six minutes and three seconds left in the second quarter. Cannon Turner at quarterback will hand it off. Counter play. Hadley breaks one tackle but doesn't have much room. He might gain one yard on the play. Yeah, um, we haven't seen a lot of counters from the Badgers um, so far today, but that time um, just trying to fool the defense again, handing the ball off. Um, Cannon Turner did design Hatley, but the defense was ready for it, um, was able to get off um, the blockers of the Arkansas Badgers offensive line and able to take them down. It looks to be just only about one yard on the play. Javante Brown along with Thomas and Rubel to the left side. To the right side is Whitten. Hatley in the backfield with his quarterback, Cannon Turner. Turner wants to pass. He'll throw it. This is Buster. Thomas goes to the sideline, now breaks it back to the uh, numbers inside the 10-yard line. They might mark it right at the 10-yard line. It's a nice game, run after the catch. And now Tatami will check in. And the most impressive thing uh, for me about the Badgers is how well the receivers block. That time, uh, screen pass on the far side, Javante Brown and Alec Rubel doing a great job blocking defensive backs, doing it without holding doing it without getting blocked in the back penalties and uh, get letting Buster Thomas find some space and get some yardage. So really, really nice job both by Brown and by Rue. Well, that's something they really excel at is blocking downfield. Third down, three yards to go for Arkadelphia, and they will run it. Here's Turner. He'll find a hole, and he has a touchdown, Arkadelphia. And another great run from Cannon Turner. I'm um, let um, led by a great blocking there from the Badgers offensive line and receivers. Kenneth Turner just goes right up the middle. There's no one there to take him down. I don't even think he was touched on that play. Running into the end zone for another touchdown today. And uh, Badgers now have a five touchdown lead, 35 to nothing, um, with still over four minutes left in this first half. And an extra point coming from Gabe Goodman. It is up, and he remains perfect on the day. It is good. Arkadelphia 36, Malvern 0, with 4.39 left before halftime. We'll take a radio break. We'll be back in one minute. And for the live stream, we're right back here with you now. Once again, pleased as we can be to bring you the live stream video this year and our sponsors are the ones that have made that possible along with the good work of our own Chris Babb. I want to say thank you to Chris. I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. Our sponsors this year have really come through for us in a major way. They sponsor also the J.R. Eldridge Show that you can see on cable television and on uh, websites of the district. Uh, we are pleased with that show, of course, our, our own Caleb Bird is the host of that show, along with Coach Eldridge. Our sponsors, once again, Roger Wingfield State Farm Insurance, Taylor King Law, Southwest Sporting Goods, Rogers, Turner, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Eddie Arnold of Jostens, and also Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Marion Martha's Florist and Gifts, Southern Bank Corps, Arnold Bats and Turner and Turner, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Insurance, and Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Gabe Goodman set for the kickoff for Arkadelphia. He has put three into the end zone tonight. And this kick is going to be high. It's going to be deep. And it is going to be returnable from the one-yard line this time. It's returned to the middle of the field to the five. He won't make the ten-yard line, guys. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Just let the ball go in the end zone, I guess, is the better uh, move there. What great kick coverage by Arkadelphia. And they have that kind of kick coverage every time there's a return. Arkadelphia is always down the field, uh, ready to make a tackle. Remember last week, Boxite had a kick returner. He's averaging 37 yards a return coming into the game. Never made it across the 20-yard line one time the whole game. So Arkadelphia's kick, return, kick coverage team is something else, and that really sets this team apart is, is how much they focus on special teams. You know, the great thing about that is that they don't take it for granted. The ball's going to go in the end zone. That was very close to being at the goal line. Instead, he ran it from the one-yard line, made it to the 10. That did give him the 10-yard line. First down and 10 for the Leopards. They're going to run it to the right side. He cuts it up the middle, and he's going to get a couple of yards, but only a couple, second down and long. Yeah, Malvern only able to pick up maybe one or two yards on that play. Just another outstanding display from this Badgers defensive line so far tonight. I mean, the likes of Jason Campbell and Ricky Rogers on the outside and um, Keandre Dawson as well as others on, on the inside. Um, this Badgers defensive line all season has done a great job, and we've seen a lot of that so far tonight. 
Kalen Jones has checked in at defensive back. Nelson also playing back there for his second series. Also getting a lot of work cornerback tonight, Patrick McLean. I'm going to bring you a lot of names tonight. Here is a run up the middle, and there's going to be a little bit of yardage, but again, not very much. Gang tackling by Arkadelphia. Ricky Rogers there. They got some good work also from uh, Turner. Uh, the linebackers really playing well tonight. Arkadelphia, real strength at linebacker. Have a score update from Box Eye. Uh, Miners have taken a lead there, 14 to 7, late in the second quarter. So, box side, 14, Nashville 7, late in the second right, quarter. What right. A, what a game that is tonight. Box side playing for a conference championship. If they win, they still win the 7 4 conference. Back to pass. Looking long, throwing across the middle. It's incomplete, almost intercepted as Harrison Doe for the football. Yeah, they could slide all the way to a four with a loss, I believe, on the um, mm -hmm. playoff uh, state right. and playoff seeds. Or they could win the conference. It's a huge game yeah. at home against Nashville. Those are their two shots. If they win, they get a one seed. If they lose, they get the four seed. So that's a big difference there for Boxite. Just amazing. Just amazing. Either a one seed or a four seed for Boxite, and they lead Nashville 14-7 to just before halftime. Malvern will punt the ball away. And on fourth down, it's a high snap, but he does get it, and he does have the kick blocked. It's going to roll into the end zone and out of the end zone. That, folks, is going to be a safety. Arkadelphia has just blocked a punt and forced a safety. I'm waiting for the official to make the call. What is the call? He didn't make the sign for a safety, but surely that's what it was. I don't think he just kicked it off. There the we side. go. Now, there, there we there, go. There, there. It took him a while. He forgot the sign, oh I guess. <laughs> oh, well. You don't see safeties that often. Yeah. Arkadelphia just picked one up, and so the Badgers lead goes to 38 to nothing. And now we have a, a bit of a normal-looking score now, 38 to nothing instead of 30 to Six to nothing. I always like it when it's a three or a seven, you know, multiples in the scoreboard. <laughs> what? The, the two-point <laughs> two yeah. conversions mess me up. It's 36 okay. is a – It's okay if Caleb has favorite numbers. It's okay. <laughs> I've always liked 38 to nothing, actually. It's better – yeah, it's better I've than 36. 38 yeah. a good number. <laughs> 38 to nothing. Hey, when it's 38 to nothing, you get to have a little fun in the press box, right? So that's okay. Arkadelphia set to receive the kickoff this time. Their free kick, I think it's called, after a safety. That was a blocked punt. Out of the side of the end zone, but the officials got the call right. It is a safety, and so Arkadelphia will get the ball back. The Badgers are going to send Victor Tatamy deep to receive this. Also, Braden Thomas. And also for Arkadelphia, deep, they're going to send Dylan Hunter. It is going to be a kickoff, not a punt. Sometimes you see teams punt, but Cervantes has a good leg. He's going to kick it. He'll kick it high. He'll kick it to uh, Tatamy at the 37. He's up to the 40, 45-yard line to the 50. He's going to be brought down, but in Malvern territory at the 47-yard line. Yeah, Tatamy has to run up to catch that ball. It looks to be about the 35 of the Badgers and able to get across midfield before the Leopards are able to take him down on the play. Um, still great field position. We've seen so many times tonight. Um, the Badgers able to make good field position of of the kickoff from Malvern. And once again, obviously, um, the Leopards having to kick it from the 20-yard line. But nonetheless, the Badgers will have it in Leopard territory to start their drive once again tonight. First down and 10, Arkadelphia. Ball at the Malvern 47-yard line. Arkadelphia leading 38 to nothing. Turner will throw it. He's got an open receiver. He hits him at the 20 to the 15-10-5. Touchdown, Arkadelphia. Perfect. On the score for the Badgers, K.J. Terry. Yeah, perfect throwing catch there for Arkadelphia. Turner dropped back, had an open receiver, K.J. Terry, across the middle of the field. It was an easy, easy pass there. Four verticals for the Badgers, four receivers running straight for the end zone, and one of them just had to be open, and that time it was Terry. And Terry making a good catch and, and, and uh, getting some good yards after the catch. He's proven himself at receiver. He played safety for most of the year, switched to receiver the last couple weeks, and uh, this week did a really good, nice job at that receiver position. Kick is up, and it is good again. Arkadelphia 45, Malvern 0, a safety, and then a one-play drive for a touchdown. 2.52 left in the second quarter, and Arkadelphia does lead it 45 to nothing. 
Well, the quick strike, when you get an opportunity like that, you see it oftentimes in football. It worked beautifully that time, Jack, as there was no safety in the way that time for the deep pass. He was busy covering another receiver, and Terry got open, and nobody ever touched him. Yeah, you know, we saw that play um, from the first drive of the game from the for the Badgers um, with, with it being Staten Witten going across the middle of the field. That time the play was broken up, but K.J. Terry was able to catch that ball, and no one was within five or ten yards of him. He was able to just um, use that 4-5 speed and just burst into the end zone. Um, first play of the drive, we've, we've seen a couple times tonight the Badgers score on their first play of their drive, and once again, I'm now Badgers lead 45 to nothing with the first half still going on. Tony Rancino here shooting some video for his television station, Arkadelphia High School graduate. Going to be represented on KATV tonight. Gabe Goodman sets up for the kickoff. He has just done a beautiful job tonight. He's made every extra point. Arkadelphia did go for two and made it the first touchdown. After that, he's hit every extra point. He's kicked off into the end zone, I, I think, three or four times. May have lost count on that. He kicked it last time to the one. It was returned to the ten. This time he's not going to come near the football. He'll just watch it go into the end zone. And another touchback. Yeah, I think Burks uh, has kind of learned his lesson about trying to catch the football. First couple times uh, it was going into the end zone. And then the one time that he did catch it, um, when the ball wasn't in the end zone yet, he ended up getting um, – lit up um, at about the 10 yard line. So that time he just didn't even move. Like like we said, uh, center fielder just watching the ball going over his head over the fence as a home run. Um, another good kick from Gabe Goodman forcing another touchback and the, and the Leopards will start at their own 20. So Malvern comes back onto the field with its sophomore quarterback. He's gonna put in a good off season and I predict he'll be a pretty good quarterback the next two years. 6'3", 155, Braxton Allen is the quarterback. He'll hand it off. Here's a running play that's gonna get nothing. Yeah, nice job there. Jason Campbell and uh, Josh Wallace coming up with the tackle there. Wallace, last week, Wallace had 19 tackles against Box Eye. So this week, coming out once again and putting in a good effort at middle linebacker. Maxie on the run that time, I think thought he had a hole, Caleb, but it closed up quickly. Uh, of course it did. Of course, with this quick Badger front seven flying to the football against rushing teams, no one has really been able to run on Arkadelphia this season, especially um, after those first two conference games. These last four wins have really uh, – Arkadelphia's done a really nice job at stopping the ground game. Second and ten for Malvern. Shotgun formation. He will drop the ball and now fall on it. The ball is still loose, and Arkadelphia says that they have it. Do the officials agree? Yes, they do. A turnover, and the Badgers have the ball. Yeah, just absolutely um, a horrible play there from Malvern. Um, the quarterback, Allen, just dropping the football. And it looks like Elijah Wheeler was able to come up with it for the Badgers. Um, another great play on um, Badgers forcing a turnover um, and able to get that fumble recovery. Badgers um, just able to fall on it. And now they have the ball in the red zone to start their drive. And the second teamers will come in to play now. Still in the first half. They're getting some quality playing time tonight. Harrison in at running back, starting linebacker. And Thomas, wide receiver, going to play some quarterback. Here's Harrison. He breaks the tackle. Now he goes wide. He's all the way to the 10. He's to the 5. He breaks the tackle. And Harrison, touchdown, Arkadelphia. What a nice run there from Kyron Harrison around the left side. He scored one touchdown tonight coming in now uh, to play at running back alongside Buster Thomas, and he does a nice job getting in the end zone, and Harrison's a big guy, and he's a guy that's not afraid of contact. He proves that from his usual position at linebacker, and he comes in on running back, he proves it some more. That time just running right through a Malvern defender for a touchdown. And the second team offense means that you've got some guys coming in on the line who might be playing their first snaps, but the backs, they might have been playing different positions, but they are game ready when they walk on the field. The extra point is up and good by Goodman, and Arkadelphia now has a 52 to nothing advantage over Malvern with still 158 left before halftime. We'll take a radio break. We'll be back on KDEL in 30 seconds. And for the live stream, we're right back with you right now. Our sponsors, once again, for the live stream this year, Roger Wingfield, State Farm Insurance, Taylor King Law, Southwest Sporting Goods, Rogers, Turner, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Eddie Arnold of Jostens and Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Marion Martha's Florist and Gifts, Southern Bank Corps, Arnold, Batson, Turner, and Turner, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, and Doctors Rob and Gary 
Rucker bringing you this live stream week after week. Pleased to bring it to you, and our signal has held strong as best we can tell here in Malvern. It's not quite as strong as usual, but we've been able to hold on and keep a good, keep a good signal for you. Arkadelphia lines up to kick off yet again. Mr. Goodman getting quite a workout. That kicker. Sent the last one into the end zone, his, his fourth touchback of the night. Here's another high kickoff. This time it might be returnable. He's going to take it at the three, return it to the right sideline, and he will not make the 10 again. Oh, my goodness. Well, you just shouldn't try to change direction, I think, Caleb. You ought to try to just run it straight down the middle because Arkadelphia will catch you if you try to run to a sideline. Yeah, I think the, the plan for Malvern on the kickoffs was to catch the ball on the left hash and then run down the right sideline. They're trying to block everyone so that the returner can run down the right sideline. When he catches the ball, he runs diagonally straight. He runs horizontally straight to the sideline. And that just, that just gives everyone time to catch up with him. Yeah, yeah. He, and he gets tackled. If he ran straight ahead, he might get to the 20. But this time, he gets tackled within the 10 once again. So, first down Malvern after the short kickoff return. They'll mark it at the 10. And they're going to run it right out Arkadelphia. And that hasn't worked all night. doesn't work again. The gain's going to be, well, a longer gain on that handoff. Two yards this time. Yeah, one of the better runs from Malvern tonight. Able to pick up two, maybe three yards on the play. The running back for Malvern is able to bounce outside and then back up the middle. Um, just trying to be shifty on this Badgers defensive line and that time able to pick up a couple yards but still to make it second and about eight on the play. Arkadelphia playing uh, some younger guys on defense as well. We're pleased to bring you their names as we go through the rest of this first half. Still 134 left and the second half. Arkadelphia, of course, leading 52 to nothing. Run, gain of one, and it is third down. I think Malvern just content to run some clock right now. Yeah, I think they're they're ready to get uh, get rid of this first half and let the clock run for the second half. Uh, unfortunate for Malvern, though, it's senior night, and you want to see these seniors go out on a high note. Well, I think what we'll see is maybe a couple of young teams playing in the second half, and Malvern did play well at the junior high level. We might see some ninth graders for both teams get some action tonight as the ninth grade seasons are over, and so we have ninth graders on both teams that have dressed out tonight. Might get to see some of those really young guys get to play in the second half. On third down and long, it will be another run. He'll go to the right side. There's a little bit of room this time. He'll cut up the field and I think make a first down. So Malvern will keep the ball perhaps for the rest of the half now with only 23 seconds left. Yeah, a good run there from Malvern, able to get to the outside. Um, a little bit of speed from that, from Malvern's running backs on that play. I'm um, just being able to get by um, this Badgers uh, um Secondary on the play, just moving it up the right side and then eventually tackled going out of bounds um, for a pickup of probably about 15 on the play. Malcolm Turner is the cornerback on the near side. See a few of the starters still in, but mostly second teamers. Here is a run right up the middle and gains nothing. Just back to the line of scrimmage. That might be the last play of the first half. Down to 15 seconds and counting. Yeah, and that's our first tackle from a freshman there, Landon uh, Kuhn making a Landon Kuhn making a tackle there for Arkadelphia. That's his first first freshman of the season making a tackle for the Badgers. Landon Kuhn on the tackle for Arkadelphia. Big play for the young man. That is the end of the first half of action tonight. Arkadelphia 52, Malvern zero. We'll be back with the halftime show in two minutes. And on the live stream, we are right back with you to tell you that Arkadelphia has completely dominated this contest so far. Our Badger sponsors for the live stream are Roger Wingfield State Farm Insurance, Taylor King Law, Southwest Sporting Goods, Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Eddie Arnold, Jostens, and also Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Mary and Martha's Forest and Gifts, Southern Bank Corps, Arnold Bats and Turner and Turner, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, and Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Well, gentlemen, your evaluation of the first half, Jack. I mean, um, from the start, um, Badgers, um, first drive of the game, they were a little unlucky having those penalties um, that kind of derailed the first drive of the game. Um, and we were kind of worried that that might be a tail of the game. But after that, they just were in full gear the entire time. 
um, from defense to offense. Uh, 52 to nothing is our scoreline at halftime. And this Badgers offense, just great execution um, from the running backs of Arkadelvia to the offensive line, from Cannon Turner to these wide receivers. And then on the defensive end, um, the defensive line has done an outstanding job going up against um, Malvinton Knight and these secondary guys for Arkadelvia doing a great job of stopping the Malvern um, sophomore quarterback tonight. Just a great job from this Badgers team in this first half, and I think we kind of expected it as well. It is what you look for in this game. Arkadelphia favorite, of course, but it's a rivalry game, so you don't want the underdog to get any momentum in the first quarter, and, Jack, they got none at all. No, not, no, none whatsoever, and um, kind of hate to see that for Malvern, like we mentioned earlier, on for as it's, it is their senior night, but Badgers still want to win in this last game of the year um, to have some good momentum going into the playoffs. In a few moments, we'll have a statistical report from Jim Rothwell, and we'll also have a conversation with Chris Babb. Caleb, do we have any score updates? Haven't checked the scores again since uh, our last update, but we have right now we have halftime. Uh, Fountain Lake leads Ashdown 21-7 to at halftime. So uh, Fountain Lake wins that game. They knock Haskell Harmony Grove out of the playoffs. So it looks like uh, Fountain Lake's on their way to a victory in a five seed from the 7-4A. And then uh, Nashville box out are tied at 14 at the half. So uh, Nashville able to score before the halftime. Uh, they are two passing touchdowns so far for Nashville, and it's tied there, 14-14. At halftime then, tied up. Nashville playing at box side, 14 to 14, and you had uh, Fountain Lake with a sizable lead at halftime, also, right? Yeah, Fountain Lake with a 21 to 7 lead at halftime. So Ashdown really struggling. Fountain Lake, that's a team that struggled when Arkadelphia played them, but now they could be a playoff team. Well, it's two two traditionally powerful teams in 7-4A, Malvern and Ashdown, at the bottom of the pack this year. Uh, Malvern well on their way now to a 0 and 10 season. Not something you usually see from Malvern and Ashdown. One in, uh, is going to finish the season. Could could possibly finish season one and six in the conference. Haskell Harmony Grove might be slipping out of the playoffs tonight, but still they had a good year for their first year in 4A football in this tough conference. Yeah, Haskell Harmony Grove is a team a lot of people predicted to finish behind Malvern this year, but they uh, started well. They beat Ashdown, they beat Malvern, and then they beat Nashville. They they claimed some scalps this year, and they've put together um, a pretty good season. It's something they can really be proud of. There only 33, 32 players coming into the season. And so not a lot of depth on the team. And, um, you know, they lost their coach in the offseason. So there's a lot of um, pessimism surrounding that program. A lot of players transferred to box site after the coach left. And so um, Harmony Grove really having a good season, a season they can be proud of. And you expect them to grow as that part of the state really is booming right now in terms of school population. And so that's a, a team that uh, will be a challenge in the future. But, man, Arkadelphia is looking really strong right now. Let's talk to – Chris Babb. Chris, I'll tell you what, at one time, the Badgers were 0-5. We all knew the possibility of a five-game swing and winning five in a row was a possibility. But you got to give the team a lot of credit, the coaches a lot of credit for working with them. So nobody gave up. Everybody focused game to game. And now here they are in a mercy rule game in the second half. It's going to send them to 5-5 five and five and a five-game winning streak going into the playoffs. Yeah, it's, it's good momentum. Uh, people uh, around the conference talking about high school football, whether it's on uh, Westmore, has talked about it a lot. Uh, uh, drive time, those people, when they do their high school focuses, talking about 4A, they say Arkadelphia is one of the hottest teams. And we sat here five weeks ago and said, you know, there's a lot of people that said uh, Arkadelphia is going to end up 5-5, five and five, but you still have to go out and do it. And they have. You know, you come into a game like tonight where you say Malvern's 0-9. Arkadelphia should win, but you still have to come out and do it, set the tone early after the first drive. Arkadelphia did that and then put the game uh, uh, without question, put a game out of reach uh, in the second quarter. Let's explain what we're doing right now in the live stream, Chris, because folks who are watching are, are getting a very interesting view of the band, and they're realizing they're not getting the view <laughs> they normally get because we're on the visitor side. So you're seeing the opposite side of this presentation than you normally see. And we would bring it to you, except for the fact that you're probably just going to hear percussion mostly right now because the instruments are facing the other way and you're not getting the full effect of the show. And yeah. so while we're going to see it from this interesting angle, and, and I think it is very interesting to see what happens on this side of the show, we're not going to we're not going to stop and, and let you listen to it because you just wouldn't get the full effect. Uh, talk to the band directors about that. And we hope that in 
in the future, we're going to be on the home side like next, next week, week. Yeah. and then be able to bring you the entire show. That's uh, that's our goal because what we're talking about here, Chris, yeah. is another state championship for this band. Yeah, you know, the show is titled Ghost in the Machine, and I guess technically from this side, we're, we're in the machine with them, you know, <laughs> but now uh, had a, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, performance Tuesday night at the 4A State Marching Championships in Little Rock. A uh, uh, great crowd went up to support the the band. A lot of students went up, uh, and it was just a great uh, great event. You know, obviously a very similar situation. You know, when you talk about this, uh, they were expected to be the best band in Class 4A, but you still have to go out and do it. And that's what they did. Right. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Seal, Mr. Smith uh, have done a great job with this program. 122. Uh, members of the uh, Arkadelphia Badger Pride Marching Band, uh, the largest band in Class 4A. And you, you look at the scores, and uh, they're all subjective, but the uh, scoring was uh, on point. They did win a third, and also congratulations to just uh, just south of us in Clark County. Some of these, some of them may be listening to our game in Gurdon right now. Uh, congrats to the Gurdon. Devin West and the Gurdon High School Marching Band won the 2A state championship. Uh, yeah, that's uh, something State else. marching champ as well. So. It was a great uh, event Tuesday night, a lot of camaraderie, Clark County camaraderie Tuesday evening. You bet. Clark County proud there. There you go. A couple there of championships. Go. Yeah, something I saw on Steve Patterson's Facebook page, most of the Arkadelphia starting football players went to War Memorial Stadium to cheer on the band at the state championship. Yeah, Coach Eldridge had contacted uh, uh, Mr. Seal, I believe, a few weeks ago, and uh, said, or Ms. Smith, and said, what's the schedule? And so that's kind of been in the works for about a, um, I guess, probably been about a month, but that's not something you just try to do to get publicity. But it was nice to see uh, the players. Players load up after practice. Coach Eldridge and Coach Chandler drove. Coach Eldridge uh, got on the bus. And about 25, and, you know, they have five football players in the band, or four or five football players in the band who don't march on Friday nights. Mr. Lloyd has said, "I'm not going to make a football player who's in the middle of a game come out uh, and march." So uh, if they're, you know, they do leave holes for them on the Friday night uh, performances. But those guys are on there, and, and I was uh, from where I was taking some pictures up top for for uh, Jim. Uh, uh, was able to see some of those football players make connection with some of their teammates. It was just good. It was good to see. They're not the only students who went up. They're the only ones who went up on a bus. But there were other, lots of other uh, students who had gone up with uh, friends and family to support the band. I think it's just fantastic when you've got one organization that's doing so well supporting another organization that's doing so well because the students need to have that well-rounded uh, background, right? You can be a sports fan and also be a band fan, and, and a lot of Arkadelphia fans find themselves in both camps. Right. You look out on Friday night, you have several cheerleaders who are wearing their uh, cheerleading uniforms performing. Uh, a lot of the uh, a few dazzlers, and you do have some football players, but you know there are a lot of these band uh, members who are also uh, student athletes at Arkadelphia High School. You look at uh, tennis team, uh, swimming and diving teams, a lot of the soccer team. Uh, and I'm leaving somebody out, but there are a lot of these uh, students in band who are, you know, a lot of them in, in a lot of different activities. We pride ourselves uh, in Arkadelphia schools. It goes in Arkadelphia of uh, them being in uh, multiple activities. It's hard. It is, it is hard to do, and sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, one or the other and just know that if I'm going to do multiple things, I might miss one of this and the other, but uh, uh, it is encouraged. It, it, it's, uh, it's a good life to, le to learn, too, because as an adult, if I'm involved in multiple things, I'm, I'm right. going to miss something. I'm going right. to miss something of one. I can't have two of myself, and people are probably thankful for that. But you can't have two of yourself, and you're going to miss something. And But uh, it's a great uh, practice at this age. You're also going to find ways to multitask. You're going to find ways to give up a little bit of your own time for the time that it takes in every activity that you are in. So they're important lessons to learn. And important to realize that you don't have to specialize, just like you don't have to specialize in one sport, you don't right. have to specialize in one kind of organization. Yeah, let's be honest. The, the majority of our student athletes, or their athletic or in whatever careers, extracurricular careers will be over uh, after their senior year in high school. So enjoy all of it. Uh, all of it you can. Just know that if you do multiple things, you're going to have to give extra time yeah. to uh, to both all of those things. And then also you probably need to find some extra time to give to your studies as well. And what we learn in the long run, I don't know if we learn this really as students or maybe it realize it, we realize it later on, Chris, but you're, you're learning important lessons along the way, whether you're devoting time to a team effort in a band competition or in a football competition, that idea of being part of a team and being responsible to other people, that's a key lesson in life. It is. You know, you're uh, you're going to have these, all these kids are going to have a job one day, no matter what their job is, where they're going to be working with somebody else and all of their coworkers are going to have to come together to do whatever that business does. They, and you pick a business, it's applicable to anything. So you're going to have to work on the team and it's great. That's why I think uh, athletics and extracurricular activities are such a good thing in high school uh, at this age, because you do have to learn to work with people. And here's the ending.
There's a great ending to the show. Once again, we, we are showing you the, the backside, and we couldn't quite hear all of it, and so we, we talked to you through the show, but talked about how much we enjoy the Arkadelphia High School State Champion Marching Band, a three-peat. Really impressive yeah. to do anything yeah. three years in a row yeah. as you've got turnover among the student body to be able to keep that quality high is truly impressive. If you turn around to football and you think about that, Chris, you've got a team coming off a state championship that struggled against higher classification teams, struggled against two other really good teams in the conference, and then put it together. The Badgers right now are looking to me like a team that's going to be dangerous in the playoffs. They are. They're playing with confidence. The coaches have done a great job of instilling that confidence in them. They're playing uh, playing like they know they could. And, you know, I think that you know, talking to Coach Eldridge after last week's game, you know, I think he believed – that the team could win. The coaching staff believed the team could win, and there are team members who probably believe they could win. You know, he, he has a lot of things about, uh, you know, his belief as one of the six tenets, but I think after going out and winning a game like that, there was a collective, a team belief, and said, hey, we are good. We can go play with anybody, because Boxside is a great team this year. Uh, eight and one after tonight, after last night, last week's game, and going into tonight's game, a big one we've talked about with Nashville. But it was a belief, I think, was the biggest thing that came out of that game as, as we go into week 10 and then on to week 11 and hopefully farther. Chris, thank you so much. We're going to take a two-minute break. When we come back, we're going to have a statistical report from Jim Rothwell. We'll be back on KDEL in two minutes. And on the live stream, we're back right here. I'm not, I'm not saying goodbye to you on the live stream. We're going to talk for another two minutes, <laughs> yeah. and then we'll go to Jim as soon as we get the radio crowd back with us also. Uh, a lot of special things going on right now for the Arkadelphia Public Schools all the way through every school, every right. system. Yeah, and a lot of the highlights we try to show on our APSD TV YouTube channel. You can go uh, this rec rec just recently this week. We put a peak fall musical. There's a parrot fall musical. The J.R. Eldridge show is always posted there. But one thing we just posted was a video of uh, the uh, AHS and the Goza Middle School FBLA chapters uh, wrapping up their uh, uh, breast cancer awareness uh, uh, fundraiser slash community service project in conjunction, in con conjunction with Sudden Link. Uh, and also with the uh, uh, city of Arkadelphia. But uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ashley Wesley and Jaquetta Berry, the sponsors of those respective groups, uh, you know, really wanted to put some legs to the going a pink out rather than just buying a bunch of pink stuff and having some merchant yes. retailer make uh, money. The money that they sold from their T-shirts, uh, got their T-shirts from Print Mania, thanks Print Mania, and suddenly were the two biggest sponsors. But the money they sold from their T-shirts uh, combined with a donation from suddenly enabled uh, the FBLA groups to give a donation of two, $2,500 to UAMS, the mobile mammal van, the Winthrop Rockefeller Cancer Institute. And the mobile mammal van was able to come to Arkadelphia and provide free mammograms for 25 area women uh, that have 40 and older that had not had their uh, uh, mammograms for the year. It was great to see uh, be a part of that from my perspective to be able to see students impact their community in a tangible way. Uh, also, they wrapped up the project last Friday by presenting survivor baskets to uh, uh, cancer survivors in town. There were four different uh, ladies that uh, some of the students each went out to their place of business or wherever uh, and, and presented those baskets. Uh, uh, Ms. Carla McDuffie at the Park County Ac Assessor's Office, Misty Harris at Slim and Shorties, Whitney Smith, one of our own, the junior, uh, band, one of the band directors, and then Cheryl Covington was presented at one of the baskets at the pep rally. So mm -hmm. it's just a good way to wrap that program up. Uh, there's a video that kind of highlights that, uh, and it was just good from my end to be able to see students make a tangible difference in, in the lives of people in our community. Cheryl, one of my former students when I was a teacher at Arkadelphia High right. School. This day will come to you, Chris, where people mention somebody and you'll say, all oh, those years ago, I was that person's teacher. It's going to happen, Chris. Yeah, hats off to Ashley Wesley and Jaquetta Berry there uh, with the FBLA chapters doing a lot of work and working with those students uh, for that uh, project. And thanks to Suddenly by Altice uh, for being a project partner as well. Okay, I've got one other question before we go to stats from Jim Rothwell, right. and that is, uh, tell us again about the belt and what's going on with Cotto tonight. Yeah, College of the Washita sponsors the belt, and we'll We've got a picture of that that we'll uh, put up here. Uh, they contacted uh, Arkadelphia and Malvern school districts last year and wanted to come up with a trophy game. And they already had the, they didn't want to, they wanted it to be unique. And this is what they found. They said, how about a belt? You know, and they started this last year. They were able to bring it to both teams before the game, a few weeks before the game, uh, showed off the belt. And it is a heavy belt. I bet that thing probably weighs 10, 10 pounds. It's not just a plastic belt. The, the, uh, where you see the College of the Washita's and the two logos, that is, that is hard metal. Uh, you see the gold uh, gold bands on each side. That's where the winner goes. If you look very closely to the left, you can see Arkadelphia 2017, and there are 20 of those gold bars that each winner will go on. So wow. uh, if things hold to form,
form just below that. It'll say Arkadelphia 2018, and uh, we just played that last year in the uh, trophy case Arkadelphia High School, and hopefully we'll, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do the same. That's that's my cautious there are optimism. There's twenty of those. Twenty of those. You can only see ten there, but with the belt wraps around on the back, there are five more, two sets of five panels. So twenty of these gold uh, uh, gold bars there, and they'll take it and engrave Arkadelphia 2018. So well, if we're on, on the so. team broadcasting all the way through the end of the belt, I'll be 75 when I call the last Arkadelphia victory on the belt. That'll work. Why not? Why not? Jack Buck did that, right? He worked until he was 70. Vince 80, Scully went 88. Yeah. We, we'll work through the next 30, belt. Next, next we got belt. a couple Our of belts belt coming might on. have to expand a Do little bit. Do you get to wear the belt? I can't. I don't think the belt will fit. I don't well, think it's it, a big belt, Chris. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I realize that. Now, uh, there have been people who have worn the belt, uh, tried okay. to wear it, and they had to hold it on, but they were able to wear the belt. But uh, Dr. Steve Rook, the uh, president of College of the Washita's, and Amber Childers have done a great job of promoting that around uh, uh, Central Arkansas media. Uh, Tony Rankino is here, and he texted me before the game. He said, exactly. I get a shot of that belt. Channel 11 is here before the game. He said, they told me I was supposed to come down and, and get a get a, get video of a belt. What, what are they talking about? I said, yeah. well, let, let, let's show you. So Amber and Dr. Steve Rook of College of the Washita's uh, are proud to do that and it's a it's a it's a it's a unique uh, unique uh, trophy and it's a, it's been good for the students because I guarantee you at the end of this game when they go out and present it those guys are gonna be holding up the belt oh, throwing it bet. over the shoulder and taking pictures of yeah. it yeah yeah all right stats coming your way Jim Rothwell stats I'm guessing a little bit of a dominant look to it as Arkadelphia was able to run pass and play defense beautifully in the first half yeah, we usually start with Arkadelphia's offense, but the defense has been so dominant tonight. Let's talk about uh, what they've done uh, against the Malvern offense. Uh, Malvern's one out of five passing for 20 yards. It was a nice passing completion on the sideline. Uh, 33 yards rushing. Uh, Chris Max has led them for with nine carries for 37 yards. So if the total for the team is 33 and he's got 37, that means that the rest of them have a minus four. Wow. Uh, several of it on sacks on the quarterback and some misplays by the quarterback there. So a total for 53 yards. And for longest, I, I don't think they had a first down. They finally picked up a first down or two there toward the end a little bit. Offensively, uh, Cat, uh, Cannon Turner's four out of six, 121 yards, two TDs, two big plays on the uh, touchdown passes. Uh, rushed five times for 58 yards, two TDs. So a total of four TDs and one half for Cannon tonight and 179 total yards offensively. Zion Hatley had a big reception for 49 yards and one TD, nine carries for 36 yards. Uh, K.J. Terry's had some big receptions as well, two receptions, 65 yards, a nice catch and run for a TD. Kai Harrison's come in close to the goal and had two carries for 20 yards and two TDs. So 179 yards rushing with 121 passing. Arkadelphia had total yardage of 300 yards in the first half, Malvern 53. Uh, the block punt led to a safety. Every phase of the game, Arkadelphia has played well in the first half. And Arkadelphia has a kicker with a perfect record on extra points and also some kickoffs into the end zone. I think four touchbacks plus an onside kick that he recovered himself plus two other kicks that were returned only to the 10-yard line. Sometimes I wonder if he does it on those that don't quite get there, if he just doesn't pull up a little bit just to let the guys run down the field, you know. He's I, kicking them plenty high, high to give his return guys or coverage guys time to get down the field, and they will make a tackle they once will. they're down the field. There's been some hitting. There was a couple times you could actually hear the, the tackle. I mean, you could hear the, the, the helmet the, and uh, – Helmets come together, so the defense is playing real well. This is the offense we expected early. Big plays, yet able to consistently, when they needed to, to pick up yardage, pick up first downs till they could get the chance for the big play. Jim, maybe the most important thing we can do now is remind people that with the win, and we don't usually say a game is won at halftime, but it is 52 to nothing, Arkadelphia. With the win, Arkadelphia will be the number three seed and will play at Badger Stadium next week. Give me your evaluation of what you think that the uh, Arkadelphia Badgers are looking like as they start the playoffs at home. If I were the other teams in 4A, I would not want to play Arkadelphia right now. The last several games we've seen this team come together. Uh, again, the defense has carried them at times uh, like tonight, but the offense is beginning to, again, as I said, to be what we thought it would be with Hatley and Turner. We've seen some other weapons with Braden Thomas come into play. K.J. Terry, Kai Harrison gives them another different type of running back, shifting more running back. 
Halley's the slasher uh, and has that ability to not necessarily just cut quickly. Harrison has that ability to, to jump start and move over and quickly make a cut. So you got two different runners there. Um, I really wouldn't want to be able to play in right now because of particularly Arkadelphia at home next week. It will be very tough. Jim, you never get to this point in the season with everybody completely healthy, but all things considered, this is a pretty healthy team right now. Even though Carlos Haney was injured in the first half, he was walking around in uniform throughout the rest of the first half. They just didn't need him to play anymore tonight. One would hope that he'd be back at full steam next week. Yeah, I imagine they are just holding him out as a precaution and uh, no reason to send him back in and – uh, in a game like this and just make sure he's healthy for next week. And I think there was one other, I don't remember who it was, but I think other than that, they're very healthy. Yeah, you, you, healthy is, is, there's more than one way to look at it, I guess I should say, Jim. I mean, it's one thing to have people dressed out. It's another thing to have them really full speed. The Badgers look like they're full speed. The, the defense tonight, I've never seen such swarming the ball. I mean, there are times there are seven, eight guys around the ball here before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Uh, they had so many lost yardage plays or zero yardage or one yardage plays. Uh, the only reason they had 33 yards is they had one, I think, one or two good runs. Malvern, we remember, literally had a first down at the 20, pitched the ball to the right side. He was tackled for a seven-yard loss, but because he didn't go down, six or seven Badgers just kept pushing him until he was in the end zone. I mean, it was just incredible. Maybe a little bit of a slow whistle on the play, but still the pursuit has been such a key, as you said, for the defense. It really has. Getting their back out. Look how Badgers doing their usual warm up, uh, getting ready for the second half. Arkadelphia is down to our right side now, and they don't just warm up a little bit. They do some serious work to get ready for the second half. And I see Carlos Haney going through the workout, so I think he's going to be okay. They won't need him in the second half, Jim, but if they did, I think he could play. Uh, we. I don't know, usually you'll send your starters out for one drive in a game like this. We'll see if uh, Coach Eldridge does that. I think we'll see a lot of the uh, backups, and we'll see maybe even see some of these freshmen. There's some outstanding freshman skill players uh, uh, coming along as well. So we'll see if they get to play some tonight, which would be great in a game like this to be able to get some experience on the field. Oh, I think they're going to get uh, a half of experience, even if it is a rolling clock in that half. It's not just 35 to nothing, which is the good sportsmanship rule. It's 52 to nothing, Arkadelphia in complete control. Yeah, I looked, and Arkadelphia scored uh, 22 points in the first quarter. I thought, well, that's a pretty good quarter. He scored 30 in the second quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty amazing. That included a block punt, and then after the onside kick, uh, or after the free kick, after yeah. the safety, uh, one play touchdown. I mean, they, they've scored in bunches they tonight. Have, they have. Arkadelphia 52, Malvern 0. We're getting ready for the second half. Caleb Bird's going to rejoin us here momentarily along with Jack Bennington. It has been exciting here in Malvern. The last trip to Malvern, Arkadelphia got 63 points last year in Arkadelphia. Against Malvern, the Badgers got 66 points. I think they could score more than that tonight if they would like to, but what we're going to see as the main course of action of the second half is going to be young guys getting a lot of action because that's how you become a good team year after year when folks get to play as youngsters and then have, can draw on that experience as they get a little older. That's been one of the keys this year, this young offensive line that struggled a bit at the beginning of the season, Caleb. They got playing time in games like this last year, and it was really helpful as they were able to come through later this season as veteran players, as more seasoned players. And they're going to look for that kind of opportunity for the young guys tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of young guys that are going get, to get a chance to play tonight. We saw, um, you know, just before halftime, a freshman, Landon Kuhn, making a tackle right before halftime. So I'm sure we'll see um, a lot more of that as we move into the second half. And, and getting that experience for young guys is really crucial. Another thing these young guys, these freshmen are going to get is they're, they're, in, they're in varsity practice now. They're practicing with the, right. with the older players, with the seniors, and that's, you know, for a 14-year-old, 13-year-old, you know, ninth grader to be practicing against – 18-year-old seniors, that's a big deal. And that, and that really matures you a lot as a football player and, uh, and matures you a lot as an athlete. That's the first of many, many tackles we're going to see from Landon Coon. He's going to be an outstanding Arkadelphia Badger. We'll see more tackles from him probably here in the second half. Arkadelphia will kick off to begin the second half as the Malvern Leopards kicked off to begin the football game. We're just about ready for action, but we'll take one more break for radio on KDEL. We'll continue in 30 seconds.
And on the live stream, we are right back here with you to tell you that Mr. Goodman is going to kick off. And uh, gentlemen, it has worked well, whether it's gone into the end zone or not. The kickoff coverage, his kickoffs, everything has worked beautifully tonight. Yeah, everything's worked really well uh, on special teams for Arkadelphia, but now they're going to have a chance to get some of those younger guys in on, on the uh, headhunting team already. The, the young guys, I see them lining up around uh, special teams coaching staff, getting ready to go out there and uh, make some plays. Um, definitely a, a few smaller guys out there as, as their freshmen have been playing on the junior high team, but um, these guys are ready to get some playing time and um, glad, to, glad to see the coaches are ready to give them some as well. Yeah, we're going to see some talented young guys out there with a few veterans also. The key is that Gabe Goodman is going to kick it, so it's going to be high and deep. It might land at the one, it might land in the end zone, but Arkadelphia is going to send some guys down the field to cover this kick here momentarily. Lucas Witherspoon on the field for Arkadelphia. We also see a true freshman in Jay Sean Davis. He's six feet, 185, is going to be a star for this time. Kyler Pfeiffer on the field for Arkadelphia. Kalen Jones on the field for Arkadelphia. Landon Kuhn, the ninth grader, on the field for Arkadelphia. Trey Bledsoe also for the Badgers. And here's the kick from Goodman. Goodman's kick is high, but it is returnable this time from the one. He's out to the five, tries to make it the sideline, can't do it, reverses field. He's not going to make it back to the 10. He's going to be pushed out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Just depends on where they spot it. I think they're going to spot it all the way back toward the two-yard line. Tackle by Caleb Eddy. Yeah, really nice play there by Eddy to make the tackle on the play. It looks like the, the uh, Malvern return man was going to get a nice gain. It looks like he had gotten away from the uh, kick coverage team, but Eddy you know, got out of his lane and corrected himself and Made a good tackle, pushing them all the way out of bounds, and uh, they're going to have a forward progress at, what, the four-yard line? Yeah, they're going to mark it at the five. That's a four-yard kickoff return. <laughs> That's an incredible play by the headhunting team. He caught the ball at the one <laughs> and made it to the four. Unbelievably Impressive. great coverage by Arkadelphia. From the five-yard line, first down and ten for the Leopards. They're going to run the ball, and right up the middle it will go. Arkadelphia dancing, trying to find the running back who is dancing around a bit and is going to get some yardage. Good size for this back who's checked in. He's going to have a nice gain, eight or nine yards on the carry. Yeah, good run there from Malvern. Um, able to get it running up the middle. Um, the running back for Malvern able to bounce to the outside. Like you said, Jeff, they couldn't really find him. Is able to get by this Badgers defensive line. Looks to be close to the first down mark. I think he's just short on second down, but still great run by Malvern on that first down play. Jordan Beard, one of the Badgers in on that tackle. Arkadelphia lines up defensively. It is going to be second down and one. On second and one, a running play. There's a little bit of yardage there, and the gain is going to be out close to the 19-yard line. Davis made the tackle. He is only a freshman for Arkadelphia. Plays offense, plays defense. Have to see where he might land a position next year. Talented guy. On the carry, the starting running back from Malvern, London Florence. He's a senior. Yeah, that was a nice tackle from Davis, and he broke down in the hole and uh, made a nice form tackle on a senior. And that, that's difficult to do, but really nice job there from Jay Sean Davis to break down and make a good tackle. 17 or 18-year-old being tackled there by a 15 or 16-year-old. Not an easy thing to do at that age, but he did it well. 210-pound running back he just tackled. It's first down at 10 for Malvern at its own 19-yard line. And we have a flag, some movement on both sides, but who is guilty of the penalty? Haven't had that many penalties tonight. We really haven't. It's been uh, that first drive of the game for Arkadelphia. The Badgers had quite a few penalties called on them, some illegal formations, some, uh, quite a few false starts. But now um, it looks like it's been rather rather penalty-free game. But now some of the younger guys get a chance to play. We might see some more penalties. Clock's going to continue to run, of course. 52 to nothing, Arkadelphia. 9.30 left, third quarter. And Malvern is lining up with mostly at starters on offense against Arkadelphia playing some younger guys. They're going to switch their blocking backs to the left side this time. On first down and 15, they're going to run it again. And Florence this time has a gain, but will be tackled short of the original line of scrimmage. Second down and long. Yeah, nice tackle and some, some more Badgers in on the stop there. Sammy Hawthorne uh, leading the pack. Good to see Sammy back. Last week he was out with an illness, but he's uh, back and healthy this week and looking good uh, playing some middle linebacker now. 
Ball at the 18-yard line. It is second down and 11 yards to go. And second and 11. The quarterback, Allen, he is a sophomore himself from Malvern. 6'3", 155. He wants to throw the ball. He'll fire it deep downfield. This is a wobbling pass, and it's incomplete. Yeah, unfortunate there for Malvern. It was uh, Dallas Lewis, the intended receiver on the play, and uh, it was a nice throw from the from the Malvern quarterback. It was a really nice ball from Braxton Allen, but Davis just couldn't, or excuse me, Lewis just could not pull it in. It went right through his hands and fell to the ground. Third down, 11 yards to go, ball at the 18-yard line. Malvern working against Arkadelphia's second-team defense. And the Badgers are looking strong defensively as Malvern has had one first down in this possession, but on third down and 11, they're going to line up. And will they throw the ball? Or will they go back to Florence? Now they're going to call timeout. Hmm, my goodness, they really want this first down. Timeout called. Arkadelphia 52, Malvern 0, 7.49 left, and the clock has stopped. Yeah, I don't like seeing the clock stopped in the second half when you have a mercy rule situation. But As we get through the second half, Caleb, if you see an update on the Mal on the uh, Nashville game against Boxite, be sure and give it to us. This game is likely to be over before that one is, but we want to keep people updated because it's an interesting game for both teams. Boxite could be a number one seed or could be a number four seed by the end of the evening and Nashville's fate could change as well. Yeah, we're in the third quarter in box side and it's still 14 to 14. So the third quarter just started just like it did here and it's still 14 to 14 ball game. 14 to 14 in box side at the pit. Arkadelphia playing in Malvern. Arkadelphia 52, Malvern zero. Then uh, Fountain Lake, they've jumped out to a big lead over Ashdown, 34-7. to Fountain Lake leads Ashdown now. So Ashdown will go home for the rest of the uh, playoffs. They won't be in the playoffs. And Fountain Lake has made the playoffs. After struggling in the middle of the season, they've come on a little stronger here in the end. All right, on third down, Arkadelphia almost jumped, but he got back in position. They have not snapped the ball yet. On third down and 11, they'll throw the ball into the flat. There's the catch. He's gonna make it to the 21, 22, 23, but that's it. Fourth down and long should be a punting situation. Yeah, really nice play there from Jay Sean Davis. Once again, coming in, the freshman making a tackle from behind, able to catch up with the ball carrier in that play and bring him down. So freshman now for Arkadelphia, getting some good playing time and uh, making some good plays. Uh, they're giving every appearance of going for it here on their own 24-yard line on fourth and six. Now they're going to send the punt team on. Well, Arkadelphia is going to send a new man back to receive, to receive this punt. It's Pfeiffer. And they're also going to send deep with him Deion Hunter. So Hunter is deep and Pfeiffer deep for Arkadelphia. Here's the kick. It's a long kick, a high kick, returnable though perhaps. Now it's going to be allowed to bounce, and it will bounce inside the 30, and it will come to the 26-yard line. Cervantes in his last high school football games had a couple of nice punts. Yeah, Cervantes has played really well for Malvern, um, getting some nice punts off. Now it's another one, flipping the field. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see now the Arkadelphia's offense, some of the younger guys coming on the field. We know there's some really uh, outstanding playmakers in, in this younger team. Buster Thomas particularly is going to move to quarterback position. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to see what he can do there and uh, what the rest of those guys can do out there. Some older guys going to likely get some playing time as well. Might see a little bit of Don Hunter out there. Ball at the 26-yard line of Arkadelphia. First down and 10 for the Badgers. We are in the third quarter. Arkadelphia 52, Malvern 0. Arkadelphia lines up with its young quarterback, Braden Thomas, only a sophomore. He's a starter at receiver, now playing quarterback. As the starters are going to take some time off here in the second half with a 52-point lead. Here is a running play. Goes to the right side. Not a lot of room there, so a short run by Jones. Yeah, Jones not really able to get anything going, and I think Arkadelphia is going to run all the time off the play clock they can every time. That, that play just then, they... Um, Buster Thomas stood behind the center, turned around, looked at the play clock behind him right till it went down to five seconds and snapped the football. So every time we might see Badgers just trying to run this clock down, um, see if they can finish this game out quickly. Logan Becker is the split receiver nearest to us on the nearest sideline. Also, Pfeiffer is a running back on this side. Arkadelphia lines up. 
Thomas can throw the ball, but Caleb's right. They're going to run the ball. Instead, it goes up the middle. There's a nice run. Good effort across the 30-yard line. Third down coming, but that was a good, tough run. Yeah, yeah, a good run there by Kalen Jones. That time a lot better than the first go around. Able to get by um, a couple of the Malvern um, defensive linemen there, just um, shifting um, his position, going uh, originally going to the left side, but cutting it back to the right side and is able to pick up a couple more yards on that play to now make it third and manageable. Third down, five yards to go. 438 left clock running. We're in the third quarter. Arkadelphia 52, Malvern 0. And Thomas lines up at quarterback. Braden Thomas, the sophomore, backup quarterback, runs to the right side, and there's some yardage and a first down, I believe. Let's look for the spot, but that should be enough for a first down, Arkadelphia. Good run once again by Kyler Pfeiffer. Yeah, nice job there. Uh, I think that was, was that Pfeiffer or was it Jones on the run there? Yeah, it was Kalen, Kalen Jones, the running back there, and they look similar out there. One's number 13, one's number 14. They both have red socks on. There's not too many players with red <laughs> socks on the field, so... Uh, easy to get him mixed up out there, but Kalen Jones with a nice run across the right side, and his buddy Pfeiffer with some good blocking at wide receiver. Yeah, that's right. He's lined up at wide receiver, and Jones is the running back again on this play to the right of his quarterback, Braden Thomas. And it's a handoff. Jones looking for a place to go. Good cut, and he's got some yardage. To the 50s, to the 45-yard line, to the 40-yard line, to the 36-yard line. Good run by the youngster. Yeah, good run there by Kalen Jones once again. Just running it right up the middle just by this Malvern defense. Not able to bring him down initially, and he just continues to um, get that stride and full stride, able to get right through this Malvern defense and would pick up a first down on a long run there from the sophomore. Also in the game for Arkadelphia, Caleb Eddy. We also see in at receiver uh, Colin Medley, 6'3", senior receiver. He's lined up on the far side. Becker is the receiver lined up wide to the near side, along with Pfeiffer in the slot. Quarterback is Thomas. He'll hand off again, and there's another good run. He'll break a tackle, go to the 30. Good run to the 26-yard line by Jones. Yeah, Jones is starting to get into a rhythm now at running back, and I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing from him. Uh, only a sophomore, but he's getting some really nice runs in. He's not a big guy, 5'10", 180. Uh, that sounds actually does not sound as uh, he looks a bit smaller than Hatley does on the field, but he's actually not too small. Running with a lot of power, though, a lot of um, aggression and confidence in his running. He picks his holes and makes his cuts nicely, gets upfield. He has some good vision as he's finding a hole. As his path is cut off, he finds a hole in a different direction. So he's doing some nice running, reacting to the defense. It is second down, only one yard to go. They'll send Pfeiffer in motion. They're going to hand it to him. This is Pfeiffer on the run this time. He'll cut it to the outside. Not much room. He tries to cut back, and that was a mistake. He'll lose a few yards as a result. Second and one just became third down and closer to five or six. Yeah, that time it was Kyler Pfeiffer on the run, just trying to get it out to the right side. Um, his counterpart there of Kalen Jones. I'm not able to pick up much yards on that play. Good coverage there from Malvern. Um, but Pfeiffer didn't help himself out there by not going downfield on that run. It leads a negative gain on the play, which now makes it, I think, about third and four. Well, will Thomas throw the ball for the first time from his quarterback position? Will he run the ball or will he continue to hand off? We'll see. It is third down, not fourth. Probably four down territory. On third down, he's going to pass. And the throw is batted into the air and incomplete. A little miscommunication, I think, Caleb. I'm not sure his receiver ever turned around to look for the ball, so it's incomplete, and it's fourth down and four. Yeah, Thomas had an open receiver on that play. Just well, Like you said, he didn't turn around and look for it, and so it fell incomplete. It'll be interesting to see what Arkadelphia elects to do here. The, the clock's uh, going to wind down, and this is some field goal range for Gabe Goodman. You think maybe they might let him try a really long field goal, a 40-plus yarder? Well, right now it would appear that they are thinking seriously about going for it. I think they will. They're going to go for it. Braden Thomas at quarterback. Gets the snap. He's going to hand it off, and here comes Jones. He's got a little bit of room. He'll break one tackle. He won't break the second one. That's very close, though. He might have a first down. Logan Becker thinks he has a first down. The officials 
Are they going to call for a measurement, or are they going to call this a first down? It's a first down and 10, Arkadelphia. Good run. Yeah, good run there by Jones. He knew where the marker was, and he got there. Um, like I said a moment ago, Jones is really good at cutting up field. He's, he's a downhill runner. He, he's going to cut up field, and he's going to run straight ahead, and that's a good way to pick up some yards. He's a quick guy and uh, going to be able to pick up some nice yards for the Badgers in the future as we head into the fourth quarter. That is the end of the third quarter. It is our Cadelphia 52, Malvern 0. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in one minute. And we're right back here with you on the live stream. So Jones had several runs here late in the third quarter, Jack, and then they sent in K.J. Terry, who was just beaming and excited to be in the game at running back. But we'll see now after the break in the quarter if they'll leave the senior Terry in, who basically a defensive player, caught a touchdown pass tonight, though. Will they let him play some running back now or go back to Jones, the sophomore, who's getting a lot of action here in the second half? Yeah, I think that just tells you the, the type of depth that the Badgers have, um, running backs and receivers, just athletes in general on this football team. Um, so many guys, like you mentioned, uh, K.J. Terry coming on. Um, on the offense, uh, normally a defensive player. And now the sophomore, Kalen Jones, breaking onto the scene, um, just leading this Badgers in this drive, first down after first down, doing a great job. I think that just kind of speaks to um, this Badger team and how good um, these backups are, which could possibly be um, starters in the upcoming years. And it looks like there's a bright future. Arkadelphia at the 25-yard line of Malvern, first down and 10. On first down, Braden Thomas will hand off. This is K.J. Terry. He's got some room. He's to the 2015. He's going to score. 10-5 touchdown, Arkadelphia. And that's Dion Hunter on the run. The senior getting some nice playing time in his last regular season game of his Badger career on the end of round. And he showed some nice vision and some nice speed to get in the end zone. And that's 58 points now for the Badgers. And that's a really nice run from Don Hunter. It's really good to see the senior out there putting some points on the board. Yeah, glad you got that number better than I did there, Kayla, because we want to talk about Hunter. He's a senior. He's put a lot of work in, and he got a touchdown. It showed some excellent speed. Good work by Hunter on the touchdown. Now Caleb uh, or K Gabe Goodman in for the kick. His kick is up, and he is perfect again. He is just nailing every extra point. And now he'll kick off. Arkadelphia stretched its lead to 59 to nothing. The last two years, Jack, Arkadelphia has won by scoring 63 and 66. Now they're at 59. Yeah, I mean, um, the Badgers has been kind of pretty much dominant uh, to Malvern on um, these past couple of years. The Washington River Rumble, a huge rivalry for the Badgers um, that's been going on for the past couple of decades. In the past couple of years, the Badgers have had the Leopards number. And as we see tonight, um, that is definitely the case once again. Three years ago, Arkadelphia won. They scored 49, but it was a close game, 49-42 win. The last two years have not been close. This year, even more spread out. 66-6, I think, was the score yes. just last year. But right now it's 59 to nothing. Malvern has not come close to scoring points tonight. No, they haven't. I think they've only driven across the 50-yard line one time tonight. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's sad to see for Malvern that they used to have such a good football program here this year. That's a down year. But at halftime, they brought out the junior high team. The junior high team's not playing tonight. The ninth graders, I, I guess, are not playing because they were all on the sideline in jeans and their junior high jerseys, uh, you know, celebrating winning a conference championship. So help's on the way for Malvern. It just might be a few years. We are well into the fourth quarter already. Here is a kickoff that will go into the end zone. Yet another touchback tonight for Goodman, and we're down under 10 minutes now left in the game. Yeah, and once again, we see K.J. Burks just stand there and watch Gabe Goodman kick it in the end zone. And Gabe Goodman, um, despite being up by 59 points, does not um, has not stopped um, his strong leg. Um, that's not going to stop him. Another touchback tonight, as we've seen plenty of those tonight and plenty of those this season from the senior kicker. Arkadelphia lines up defensively. This is a young unit, but they have pitched a shutout here in this abbreviated second half with the rolling clock. As it is 50, was 52 to nothing at halftime, now 59 to nothing, Arkadelphia. Back to pass, the sophomore quarterback overthrows his intended receiver who tipped it to himself but could not hold on. So the screen pass is incomplete, and it's been a tough night for the sophomore quarterback, Braxton Allen. Yeah, it was not a great throw there from Allen. And 
The receiver was uh, probably going to make that catch and then be brought down pretty quickly by Jay Sean Davis. That, that freshman outside linebacker is doing a really nice job out there tonight in the second half. Second down, 10 yards to go. Here is Allen at quarterback in the shotgun. He wants to pass again. He'll roll to his right. He is under duress, and he will r escape tacklers and make a yard or two. He'll go down to the 22-yard line. Well, he avoided the sack, but he's, his gain's only a couple of yards. It's third and eight. Yeah, some Badgers chasing him around in the backfield there. It was uh, Landon Kuhn alongside uh, alongside Kuhn was Chandler Langstaff. That's a senior Langstaff, the defensive lineman coming in and doing a nice job chasing around um, chasing around the the uh, quarterback in the backfield finally brought down by Hawthorne, though, as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Oftentimes when you see a ninth grader come into a game like this, it's a speedster, somebody with unusual speed. Landon Kuhn looks like a man out there in defensive end, only a ninth grader. Back to pass. Under pressure, he'll fire it downfield. It is incomplete. Well defended by Arkadelphia, providing the defense for the Badgers on the play was Trey Bledsoe. Yeah, Bloodsoe there, another young guy, a sophomore coming in, and it's really exciting to see these young players come in and play so well against Malvern, who's still playing a lot of their first-teamers out there. But these young guys from Arkadelphia coming in and doing a nice, nice job out there, um, providing good defense and good offense against uh, some Malvern veterans. Arkadelphia sends its kick return team onto the field. Hunter is out there. He just scored a touchdown for the Badgers. Also out there is Pfeiffer. And Arkadelphia will line up. And Cervantes will have one more chance to kick. Now, I had one block tonight for a safety, but he's also had a couple of great punts. There's a very high pop fly of a snap, but he will get it and kick it short. And with the bounce, it will be a little bit to Malvern's advantage, but not much. A short kick this time after the very high snap. And Arkadelphia has, Jack, tremendous field position at the 42-yard line of Malvern. Yeah, and if I counted correctly, I'm pretty sure that Malvern only had 10 guys on the field um, for that punt. We saw um, one or two guys come on at the very end, but I, I'm pretty sure they still only had 10 guys on the punt that time. Um, Badgers were almost able to get there to block it, but the punter for Malvern was still um, able to get the punt away. Um, a high punt at that, but not a whole lot of yards as the Badgers will start in Malvern territory at the 42-yard line. The snap had almost as much hang time as the punt that time, and that makes a kicker nervous, and so he got it away quickly, and it went straight up on him. Arkadelphia from the 42-yard line, first down and 10. Thomas, and quarterback, will hand off. Here is a nice run inside the 40 to the 35-30-yard line, a big tackle at the 29-yard line, but that's enough for a first down. Good run by Jones. Yeah, good run there by Kalen Jones. Uh, we've seen so many times uh, tonight, or at least in this uh, quarter, um, the last drive, Kalen Jones is providing a lot of offense for the Badgers in the run game. And to start off this drive, he's done so again, picking up the first down on his first carry on this drive, just going out to the right side and just great blocking by the Badgers right there. Colin Medley doing a great job blocking on the play. And the Badgers will have another first down here. Jaden Quarles is the center. Caleb Bird in at guard. We'll bring you the names of the other Badger offensive linemen as we go through the rest of the fourth quarter here. Arkadelphia leading 59 to nothing. Running play to the left side. Here's a carry, and this is an end around by Pfeiffer that will gain yardage up near the 20. I think they'll mark him at the 21, but a good run by Pfeiffer. Yeah, some other offensive linemen out there. Like you said, Quarles at the center. Bird, Caleb Bird at the guard. Uh, Reese Nowlin out there on the offensive line alongside Gunnar Johnson and Carson McAnally. So uh, some good young offensive linemen out there getting good playing time and making some nice blocks. They're, they're really the reason Jones is being able to run so well um, out here against still the Malvern first team defense. Arkadelphia looking to the sideline. Now they've got Braden Thomas at quarterback, but he's not running the ball right now. They're, they're letting the younger guys have the football. Thomas himself is a sophomore, but he's got more experience. This time he'll run because of a broken play, and he'll try to get back to the line of scrimmage, and he will, and make a bit of a gain on the play. What a good run by Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, I think they're trying not to let Thomas get hit too much here in the second half. Thomas is one of the key players on offense, so they want to give him some experience running the offense at quarterback but not experienced getting hit uh, in the second half and keep him fresh for the playoffs. So nice job by Thomas there, picking up some yards and also getting, bound, getting out of bounds, avoiding the hit. Something out of nothing. It is first down and 10 after that run to the 19-yard line, make it the 18-yard line. 
Arkadelphia, not in a hurry. Only 3.49 left in the game, but these young guys would like to put one more touchdown on the board. Nobody's going to tell them not to put some effort out here. The game hasn't ended yet. Here's a run to the right side. Nothing there that time for Jones. Yeah, Jones around the right side, and Malvern did a good job shifting with the offensive line. And, um, you know, Jones might have had some room if he had cut back to the left, but uh, going too hard downhill to get that um, cutback lane. So Jones, a really good downhill runner, but whenever um, that cutback lane's there, maybe he's running a bit too fast downhill to cut back and find that hole. From the 20 at second down and 12, Thomas looks to the sideline. Jones still in the game at running back. Everybody looks to the sideline. Arkadelphia not running a hurry up offense at the moment. No reason to do that when you're ahead 59 to nothing here. Late now with less than three minutes left in the game. Here's a pass across the middle. That ball's caught. And, folks, that is a touchdown, Arkadelphia. On the catch for the touchdown, Caleb Eddy. Wow, what a touchdown catch there from Caleb Eddy. Uh, looked like the ball was behind him there, uh, the pass from Buster Thomas. But Caleb Eddy, was, Caleb Eddy was able to reach back and grab that ball and just run to the end zone, just holding on for deal life just so he wouldn't fumble the ball and was able to fall into the end zone as he, would ta as he was tackled by Malvern. And the Badgers get another touchdown on the board. Um, great throw by Buster Thomas there. Great route from the, from the junior wide receiver and another touchdown for the Badgers. Goodman on for the extra point attempt. He is set. His kick is up and his kick is perfect again. Gabe Goodman has had quite a night. Arkadelphia, folks, now leads in this game 66 to 0 with two minutes left and the clock continuing to run here in the running clock second half. And the Arkadelphia's now matched that score from last year. You asked at the beginning of the half, can they match the 66 points? Now they have. The second team offense doing all of it. Eddie alongside Dion Hunter, the two wide receivers getting two touchdowns for Arkadelphia. So good to see uh, this, this young team come out and get some points. And also Badgers matching their total from last year. That's over 60 points three years in a row now against Malvern in this rivalry game. And Eddie showing that he's going to be a target come next year for the Arkadelphia Badgers. Yeah, Eddie looks like he's a guy that can slot right into the Alec Rubel role of a good blocker, but also some sure hands. Uh, he's made some good blocks playing that fullback spot, playing that wide receiver spot tonight. Um, he's also showed some sure hands with that touchdown catch. Arkadelphia dominating from the opening moments tonight. Will be at home in the playoffs next week, a number three seed. And we'll keep you up to date, although this game is going to be over before the one in box site. We'll keep you up to date as we have scores in that game. Box site could be a number one seed, could be a number four seed by the end of the night. And Nashville, well, their slot depends on that game as well. Here's the kickoff down the sideline. It's going to be allowed to bounce, and it will go out of bounds just before it got to the pylon. It snuck out of bounds. Yeah, I hate to see that from Gabe Goodman. I, I talked to him um, earlier this week about – um, those those kicks going into the corner and just going out of bounds. He tells me it's always always the worst thing for that happens to him. Um, obviously trying to get it into the corner of the end zone, but I'm sure Goodman is going to be beating himself up for that. Um, despite his stellar night tonight for the Badgers, um, but that time the ball went out of bounds. 15 seconds left in the game. Malvern wants to run one more play, and it will be a little trick play as the halfback will catch the ball and make about seven yards on the run, and that will be the last play of the night. Arkadelphia will see the clock tick to zero. It's a final. Arkadelphia 66, Malvern zero. Quick score update before we go to break. Yeah, quick score update in, in uh, Nashville. They have the ball inside the 20-yard line, about to score in the fourth quarter. So Nashville scores they go ahead uh, by seven points uh, in the fourth quarter. So Nashville getting close to scoring. You know, that game might end while we're in the post-game show. So we'll bring you updates as we get them. That is a key game for Boxite and for Nashville. But for Arkadelphia, it is all said and done. The Badgers finish 5-5 five and five on the regular season. More importantly, 5-2 and two in conference play. And the Badgers are one five consecutive games here at the end of the regular season as they head into the playoffs with a number three seed and a home playoff game in the first round. We'll be back with the post game show on KDEL FM 100.9 in two minutes. How about that? This game took less than two hours to play, and Arkadelphia gets the win 66 to nothing. That's a lot of points to score in less than two hours. 
Arkadelphia 66 to nothing with the win tonight. Want to tell you once again that we so value our sponsors that have helped us bring you this video live stream all year long and hope you enjoyed it tonight and this big Arkadelphia win. Lots of offense, lots of defense for the Arkadelphia Badgers. They get the shutout and they have the big win at 66 to nothing. Our sponsors, Roger Wingfield, State Farm Insurance, Taylor King Law, Southwest Sporting Goods, Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Eddie Arnold of Justin's Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Marion Martha's Florist and Gifts, Southern Bank Corps, Arnold Batson, Turner and Turner, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, and Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, our sponsors all year on the live stream. We honor also our sponsors for KDEL FM 100.9 in Arkadelphia as we reach the hour of 9 o'clock. We're into the post-game show now as Arkadelphia has gone to 5-5 five and five on the year, 5-2 and two in conference play with a win over Malvern, a team that did not get a victory this year, but a team that had a good junior high squad, and so we'll see if they will improve in the future. Arkadelphia 66, Malvern nothing. It's just what the doctor ordered. Uh, I would say, Jack, that Arkadelphia is feeling healthy, feeling strong, feeling confident moving into the playoffs. And see, that's a, the, tonight is exactly what you wonder for the Badgers. Um, going up 52 to nothing um, after the first half, the starters get to rest. They don't have to play a full game. Bring in those uh, younger guys, those backups, those seniors that might have not had a lot of um, snaps um, throughout the season. And getting to do that in the last regular season game of tonight probably might be the last time that they get to have that much um opportunity to play um, as well as these young guys we see the future and guys like Kalen Jones and Kyler Pfeiffer and Buster Thomas um, showing out tonight doing an outstanding job and just a great um, job for the Badgers as a whole winning this game 66 to nothing going into the um, playoffs at probably the best position you could be um, going into tonight winning 66 to nothing like like I said um, gets get your momentum up get your confidence high and just a great win in the Washington River Rumble well, you see on the screen, on the live screen, the belt that will be awarded momentarily to uh, Arkadelphia, the College of the Washita's belt, the winner of this game every year, will be getting that belt. Arkadelphia will have it now with its fourth win in a row against Malvern in the second year since they created this belt. It's a nice win for Arkadelphia, as expected. Lots of people got to play. Lots of people played well. It was a game that gave you a lot of faith in this team in the playoffs, and it gave you a lot of faith, Jack, in this team in the future as the younger guys really put it on uh, Malvern with 14 to nothing, the second team for Arkadelphia beating the first team Malvern defense. So it was quite a performance by Badgers young and old. Yeah, you love to see that from the Badgers tonight, um, just doing a great job, um, getting the job done, and a great look at the future there. Um, like I said, guys like Kalen Jones, Kyler Pfeiffer, um, Buster Thomas, um, the quarterback of the future, um, once Cannon Turner leaves in about a year and a half now. Um, just a great job from this Badgers team. Uh, the young guys stepping up big, um, performing well um, against these um, backups of Malvern, um, holding, holding true and getting the win and keeping the shutout going. And a very important thing for this Badgers um, defense. These guys, they don't want to give up a point after coming out of the game. They didn't do so tonight. Um, winning the game 66 to nothing. Just an outstanding job on both sides of the ball, and the Badgers able to pick up a win. We're going to continue with the audio now on the live stream. So you're going to see a picture of the belt, but you're going to hear an interview momentarily or in just a few minutes as soon as he is available. You're going to hear an interview that Caleb will do with Arkadelphia head coach J.R. Eldridge. You'll also get a full statistical report from Jim Rothwell. And it's going to be a very interesting one as he chronicles just what the yardage looked like for Arkadelphia. It's going to be a very interesting story as the Badgers completely dominated the game as the score shows of 66 to nothing. It was not only a game with a lot of touchdowns for the Badgers, but Jack, a game in which the defense pitched another shutout and played extremely well if it was first team or second team or it, whoever went on the field to play defense just played beautifully malvern never came close to scoring any points tonight yeah and i mean coach eldridge hey, he is a defensive uh, minded coach um as we've seen in the past couple of years the badgers defense being the most important part um pitching a shutout tonight not allowing a single point um badger defense has done an outstanding job um the past uh, few games now Fifth win in a row. Um, this defense has done outstanding in the in this win streak. Um, and tonight, um, from start to finish, really uh, 
Malvern just didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities to go down and score. I mean, this Badgers defense, they they held true. They did not allow much yards there for, for a good portion of the first quarter. Um, um, Malvern did not have any positive yards. Um, just a great way to start the game. Um, and as the game went along, Malvern were able to find their footing a little bit with the sophomore quarterback coming into the game a little bit. But still, as a sophomore, not being able to get through this veteran Badger defense um, as we saw tonight. And just a great job by um, these um, guys in the Badger secondary, guys like Carlos Haney, who uh, came out with an injury, but before that did an outstanding job, um, as well as Victor Tademy um, and other guys just doing a great job tonight. Um, this defense has been outstanding these past couple years, and every every year we kind of say, man, uh, these guys, this guy's going to be gone. He's graduating. Ah, it's going it's to be a lot harder, but every year somebody tends to step up, and we've seen that time and time again. And after watching the second half with these younger guys, I really don't think I have that question going into the offseason. <laughs> I think you're exactly right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, one other thing that we can say, and we'll give some credit to Malvern here, it never got really um, chippy or out of order tonight. Uh, the, the, it was well officiated. The two teams played very hard but respected one another. And now you see on senior night some of the Badgers actually greeting some of the Malvern players and showing some appreciation for guys that tried hard all season but could not win a game this year for Malvern. Arkadelphia, a huge crowd of parents, of fans gathering with the players down on the field here at Malvern as they are celebrating a successful end to the regular season, one that started with maybe a little bit of frustration going 0-5. They did play three higher-level classification teams in non-conference games. Then they lost to Nashville, lost to Robinson, but came back with five consecutive victories, including a win against Boxite. We don't have an update yet on that Boxite score, but it was a game that it looked like Malvern might be able to pull out, but it had not pulled out yet at last report. And um, Boxite, in other words, turned into a great team, and Arkadelphia not only beat the teams that were not expected to finish first in the conference, but they beat the one that was in first in the conference when they beat Boxite last week. And then, of course, this big win makes them 5-5 five and five on the year and 5-2 and two in conference play. Yeah, and that's what's so crazy about uh, 4A football in Arkansas. Um, starting the season 0-5, oh um, like we talked about in the pregame, those five teams are probably the toughest that we um, saw on the saw on the slate at the start of the season, but then as the season went along, a starting 0 and 5, but Boxite still hadn't lost a game and um, able to beat the teams that um, we were supposed to beat, and then came up against Boxite uh, still undefeated. Um, at that point, 8 and 0, um, the number three team in the state. Um, Badgers needed a win to still be in position to get a good seat in the playoffs, and they're able to pull pull it off at home. Um, going up against uh, Boxside and the likes of Dawson Dabbs and company, guys that just have done an outstanding job in bringing Boxside um, back to where they want to be in the top of the conference, um, as we've seen tonight. And um, unlucky for them if they do not get the victory tonight. But nonetheless, there's a great season from Boxside, um, from the Miners, just doing a great job for those fans, the booming community like we've talked about. Um, but the Badgers um, were able to take them down now coming into the Washita River Room. One of the great things about this rivalry is just that a lot of these guys, I mean, it's only 20 minutes apart, so some of these guys are friends, if not family. Um, just a really cool aspect, um, like like you mentioned, Jeff, uh, guys um, going and greeting some of the uh, Malvern players. Some of them are probably friends. They hang out on the weekends or whatever. Um, just awesome to see um, Arkadelphia able to do a good job tonight. Um, and that, like you said, also – not not getting out of hand and the referees doing a good job of that um just a great victory um tonight and i think both teams are able to hang their hats high on this game we'll take one more radio break when we come back we'll have statistics from jim rothwell and we'll have an interview as caleb bird is down on the field and looking for an opportunity to talk to arkadelphia head coach jr eldridge we'll be back with more on kdel fm 100.9 in two minutes And on the live stream, we are right back with you and want to tell you again how proud we are to have the sponsors that we have who have made it possible for us to be able to hook up a camera and hook up some new equipment and put together a live video live uh, video live stream for you every game this season. And in recent weeks, we've been really, really pleased with the quality that we're getting. We're hearing good things from you. We appreciate that. We're a little worried about the signal strength tonight. 
here at Malvern on uh, the internet signal that we were getting, but it seems to have gone well, the reports that we're getting, so we hope you've been able to enjoy the video as well as the audio tonight. Our Badger sponsors for the video live stream, Roger Wingfield State Farm Insurance, Taylor King Law, Southwest Sporting Goods, Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Eddie Arnold of Jostens and Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation, Marion Martha's Florist and Gifts, Southern Bank Corps, Arnold, Batson, Turner and Turner, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, and also Drs. Rob and Gary Rucker. Well, we're right back here with you in the post game as we're going to wrap it up in our last segment by bringing you a statistical report from Jim Rothwell and then bringing you also an interview that Caleb Bird will have with Arkadelphia's victorious head coach, J.R. Eldridge, Arkadelphia Badgers moved to five and five on the year, five and two in conference play. Malvern moves to 0 and seven in conference play, 0 and 10 on the year. The final score is Arkadelphia 66, Malvern zero. Jim, that's the most important stat, but you got a lot more. Uh, yes, again, uh, Arkadelphia defense just played extremely well tonight, giving up a total of 82 yards. Oh my. In fact, they gave up less in the second half with the subs in they did in the first half. And Malvern still had a lot of their starters in there. Uh, Florence London was still in there. Chris Maxey, uh, or London Florence, Chris Maxey, the quarterback, was still in there. Uh, again, Malvern was two out of nine, passing 27 yards, 38 carries for 55 yards. That's about not quite a yard and a half per carry. Uh, Chris Maxey did lead them with 10 carries for 45 yards. London Florence had 12 for 23. And again, several big sacks. Uh, by the, the defensive line, particularly uh, on the quarterback. So a total of defensive 82 yards for Malvern. And again, uh, the second half, uh, the, the uh, backups in there did a great job as well. A couple times that uh, Malvern had the ball, they were able to stop them and, and get the uh, uh, ball back for the Arkadelphia offense. Offensively, we got a lot of players involved tonight. Uh, uh, Cannon Turner was four out of six for passing, same as uh, 121 yards, two TDs, rushing five for 58, two TDs, same as at the uh, halftime. Zion Hatley didn't play in the second half, nine carries for 36 yards, one TD, one long pass reception, nice catch and run down the sideline uh, for one TD. Uh, KJ Terry had two catches for 65 yards at one TD. Uh, Kai Harrison, two for 20 yards, two TD, that's pretty effective. Uh, uh, two two carries, 10-yard average, two TDs. That's not bad. Uh, but, again, we got to see some of the younger players in the second half. Kalen Jones came in, eight for 55. He almost led the team in rushing. He was getting pretty close. Uh, another run or two, I think he would have done that, and that's in the shortened amount of uh, time. Um, uh, Diane Hunter, one for 25 yards in a TD. It was nice to see the senior get that. And then Caleb Eddy, one for 18 yards, another TD. Uh, Braden Thomas, uh, Again, came in at quarterback in the second half, but uh, he was passing one of two for 18 yards, a catch to uh, uh, throw and catch to Eddie for the TD. He rushed three times for 65 yards. It was interesting in the second half when he was at the quarterback, probably consciously, they did it. he never, I, don't, I think once he ran the ball because there was a little miscommunication, but it's primarily feed uh, Kalen Jones for, for the big night there. Uh, he also... <coughs> This is what you call getting him in, in, in the scorebook. He had one for two passing, 18 yards of TD, three rushes for 65 yards, one recep, uh, reception for seven yards. So he filled up the line there across and rushing, passing, and receiving tonight. Um, total yards for Arkadelphia, 406 yards. What was interesting, it was a clean game. Uh, the score, you know, you think it would be a lot of mistakes or something like that. There was one fumble by Malvern that they lost, zero interceptions. Both teams, I think, had three penalties each. Uh, not, um, you know, not a, um, not a lot of, you know, mistakes or anything like that in the game. For it to be a score like this, you'd sometimes expect there'd be a lot of turnovers or penalties involved, but there wasn't in this particular game. The defense controlled the field position, and with good field position, Arkadelphia's offense just scored quickly time and time again. I, they did. It'd, it'd be three and out, and if uh, Malvern had to punt, it was a short field because – You've got your uh, Gabe Goodman there putting it in the end zone or kicking it to the one and the deep and the uh, coverage team being down there and tackling them on the five or inside the ten. Uh, so that's a difficult place to start uh, every <laughs> it night. It sure every, is. Every time you get the ball to start at the 20 or, or backwards. <laughs> when you're having trouble making a first down. Yeah. Really put Malvern in a tough position. Arkadelphia took complete advantage of it. They did. And er, er, they did that early, which sort of set the top 
tone for the whole evening. Uh, first drive, you thought Arkansas might go and score a couple mistakes. They put that, but they quickly got the ball back. And then that onside kick just sort of kept them going, kept got the momentum on Arkadelphia's side. The first touchdown was called back. It was a beautiful run by Hatley, and he didn't get all that many yards in total, partly because that one got That's called right. back. But it also set the tone that Arkadelphia would be able to block Malvern, would be able to set up some big plays, and would be able to drive down the field when they needed to. So Arkadelphia dominated even in the first drive that didn't end in a touchdown. You could tell they were going to get some points. You could tell they could move the ball uh, from that first drive and um, after that, it, they were pretty consistent. If, if they would keep the ball for a while, then suddenly they'd have the big play. And that's the way Arkadelphia works best. Uh, if they can do that, make it, they don't have to drive all the way down the field, but keep the ball a little bit, maybe shift field position if they need to, and then go for that big play and break it. And that's what they did tonight with several big plays. Jim, thank you so much for your work on stats again. We're going to be back with you at Badger Stadium for the playoffs next week. Let's go down to the field where – Kayla Bird has a word with the Arkadelphia head coach, J.R. Eldridge. Eldridge, your team came out tonight and uh, got a big victory, 66 to nothing, over your rival. How does it feel to get uh, such a such a big uh, margin of victory in such a big game? Well, I thought it was great. Our team, you know, really dominating from from the beginning of the game uh, to the end. Uh, you know, I just felt really good about our, our players and their their work ethic throughout throughout the week of practice, and then uh, and then being able to carry over that into the game. Uh, beginning of the game, we saw some trick plays, some formations we haven't seen yet from the Badgers um, what was your thoughts heading into that well you know we try to come up with something new every week um, and so you know we felt like we felt like uh, those were some things that we could do uh, versus their defense that would give us an advantage um, felt like it did so we were able to get some um, get some good yardage and, and scores off of those things uh, but I was really proud of our offense and our defense and our special teams just executing the game plan and then finally after starting the season uh, Owen five you brought your team back up to 500 now how do you feel your momentum is heading into the playoffs yeah it feels really good to go go into the playoffs after a victory like that uh just looking forward to uh another good week of practice you know that that's the biggest thing for us is being able to focus on practice get, getting good week of practice in uh, for our first playoff game all right coach thanks so much and uh good luck uh hosting a home playoff game next week thanks so much that is J.R. Eldridge and Caleb Bird after the game, the successful post-game interview of Caleb Bird talking to Arkadelphia head coach J.R. Eldridge after an Arkadelphia victory of 66 to nothing over at Malvern. Let's pick an offensive player of the game. Lots of choices, Jack. Man, I, I hate to do this. I mean, um, it's easy for me to pick Cannon Turner having four touchdowns tonight, uh, two in the air, two on the ground. Um, outstanding really from this entire Badger offense. I mean, if I want to go with, you know, kind of the newcomer, um, Kalen Jones, um, it'd be also be easy to pick him. He's probably the star of the second half. Um, but I'd probably have to go with, with the versatile Buster Thomas for my player of the game tonight. He, he primarily, he was really one of the only offensive guys that played the whole game, um, being receiver and running back in the first half, um, getting some great first downs. Um, as well as a couple of long gains. And then in the second half, throwing that key um, touchdown pass there at the very end of the game to Caleb Betty um, just kind of shows just how um, versatile of a player he is in the passing game, the running game, and the receiving game. Um, and he just kind of showed that tonight and just how big he's going to be for the Badgers in these next couple of years. So I'd have to give Buster Thomas as my offense player. Of the game. As far as I'm concerned, you can't make a bad choice on <laughs> offense. You can mention the linemen. You can mention any of the skill position players. Mm -hmm. Everybody played well tonight. Of course, it was keyed by Cannon Turner, who had another big game. We've mentioned him as a player of the game offensively many, many times. He deserves it again tonight. But I agree with you. Everybody played well, so why not mention several of those offensive players? Caleb Bird back in the press box now. We're talking about an offensive player of the game, Caleb. If you got a choice, you, you got a lot of good choices. Yeah, I picked Turner for offensive player of the game for me. He, he had some really big runs, and there's a lot of really good players out there, but Turner, um, I think, in my opinion, he did the best out there on offense as, as well as he got some good tackles on defense as well. He did play some safety as well. So, Caleb, 
We're going to go – I'm going to agree with you. We're going to go with um, Canna Turner as our offensive player of the game, but we're going to give high honor to uh, the pick coming from Jack as well, that being Buster Thomas. We'll mention uh, Mr. Jones, the sophomore running back who played so well in the – second half as well. So Mark Adelphia with lots of good candidates on offense. On defense, same story, Jack. You can pick anybody. They all played well. Man, uh, you make this really hard. I mean, remember last week, we kind of didn't really even we decided not to pick a defense player of the game just because of how good the entire defense had been. Um, but I'd have to say, for me, I have to go with Josh Wallace tonight. I'm coming with a lot of key stops. I mean, really, this entire defense um, played kind of in unison and I'm um, doing a great job on all facets of, of that side of the football. But I have to go with Josh Wallace. I'm um, making a lot of key stops. Um, a lot of the stops were helped by the likes of Kyron Harrison and Jason Campbell and Keandre Dawson and many other guys. But I'd probably say Josh Wallace kind of highlighted the defense for tonight. I have to give him my defense player of the game. Caleb, your choice. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Josh Wallace as well. I think Josh Wallace uh, made a lot of really nice tackles out there on defense. Um, and, and deserves the defensive play of the game. We haven't given it to him much lately because he's kind of hard to see out there. Josh Wallace is just always there. He's not the kind of guy that you really see making the big tackle or or the uh, big play in the backfield, but he's always there, and he's always leading the leading the charge for the Badger defense. Well, if you're the one that makes the first hit, you're probably the one under the pile by right. the end of the play because they do run to the football. So Josh Wallace is our defensive player of the game for the Arkadelphia Badgers. we got to mention Caleb. Uh, uh, Caleb and Jack, we got to mention Gabe Goodman because yeah. Gabe Goodman, by my count, is eight for eight tonight on extra points. They also had an extra point where they went for two and made it. He also is kickoffs, Caleb. Describe that for us. It's just an amazing thing that Arkadelphia has going here where the ball either goes in the end zone for an automatic touchback or it's going to be high and land at the one or two yard line and then the coverage team will stop you before you get to the 20. It was an amazing advantage for Arkadelphia. Or if you remember the first kickoff of the game, it's an onside kick that uh, Goodman recovers himself. Yeah. Uh, so Goodman's <laughs> really versatile at kicker and really did a nice job tonight. So Goodman, we'll mention him also as a special teams player. Going to have your final comments, guys, as we get ready for the playoffs. The last game of the regular season has sent Arkadelphia to a first-round home playoff game with a five-game winning streak. Jack. Yeah, just a great job from the Badgers. Um, finished the season winning five games in a row. Um, great ending, uh, obviously, now to be able to host a home playoff game. Just uh, uh, just a great turnaround of the season, really. Um, a a two-parter for the Badgers on this season, losing the first five, now winning the next five, going into the playoffs, kind of a new team um, from the first half of the season. Going to be interesting to see how the Badgers are able to um, pull this off. The defending state champions, um, obviously – going to be favored um, in a lot of these games, um, but definitely these Badgers still have a chip on their shoulder, and they want to get another ring. All right, Caleb, you've done a little research while we've been talking. Give us an update and your final comments here. Do we know who we play next week? Yeah, it looks like Arkansas is going to host Gosnell next week. Gosnell's ranked uh, by Hootens, the 27th team in the state right now. That's one spot behind Fountain Lake to give the Badger fans some perspective. Uh, but also tonight, um, the, the they won the three seed by defeating um, Jonesboro Westside, who was ranked the number 17 team in the state. Uh, they beat them 41 to six tonight, so they mercy wow. rolled them. So uh, they're a hot team coming in the playoffs and, and winning that uh, three seed from their conference. All right, and do we have an update on the box side score in in Nashville? Yes, yeah, still tied 14 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Whew. Wow, less, 14 less to 14. Than, Less than two minutes left in the fourth quarter. I'll, I'll update my phone real quick if you want to talk for. Once again, if Boxite wins this game, Boxite will be the number one seed. If they lose it, they'll be the number four seed. So a huge game for Boxite. Also important game for Nashville. It's in the regulation. They're going to overtime. 14-14 <laughs> going to oh, overtime. My. My. Man. Big game tonight, 14-14. Well, we didn't need oversight over time, I should say, here in Nashville. I'm, what am I saying? In Malvern. Because... <laughs> Well, I, it's 66 to nothing. I, you relax a little too much maybe on the air when it's 66 to nothing. Arkadelphia with the victory tonight. So stay tuned, folks. We're going to be back with you next week. It's a home game. A huge turnout will be coming to Badger Stadium. Bring your radio with you or tune in anywhere you are. If you're traveling, you'll still be able to catch the game on the live uh, video uh, live stream. So we're pleased to bring that to you. Chris Babb is already on his way to Little Rock where he is helping Rex Nelson host a scoreboard show tonight. So we'll say goodbye and good night for Chris. And we'll also say thank you very much to 
Jim Rothwell on statistics to our videographer, Franco uh, Zunega, who is with us tonight, and also in the booth as always, Jack Bennington and Caleb Bird. Thank you so much for your work tonight, guys. Final score tonight, Arkadelphia 66 and Malvern 0. This is Jeff Root. Good night, everybody. And Abby, Daddy, is on his way home.